Good afternoon. Jake Marley here with the North Pole News Network special report. Christopher Kringle, known to millions of boys and girls around the world as Santa Claus, the annual Christmas time distributor of toys, clothing, and commercial electronics, is facing charges tonight that he's responsible for the 1996 death of John Bonet Ramsey. Those allegations stemming from an unrelated child porn investigation. We go now to North Pole News legal correspondent Jack Frost outside of the Candy Cane Courthouse in the Gingerbread Garden section of the North Pole for more. Jack? And good afternoon, Jake. That's right, uh, Kringle, looking far from Holly and Jolly, did not comment as he was escorted from his arraignment moments ago. However, Hot Cocoa County District Attorney Buzz McAllister is about to address the press any minute now to discuss the charges. Uh, the investigation, of course, unraveling after Kringle's arrest in a massive child porn sting dubbed Operation Toys for Tots. What we know right now is that Kringle was allegedly a key target in that probe and that charges against him in the Ramsey case appear to stem from evidence collected during that investigation. Uh, Operation Toys for Tots executed just over a week ago involving, of course, agents from the FBI and Interpol. And uh, if, you'll, if you'll excuse me, Jake, uh, District Attorney McAllister's press conference is about to begin, so um, let's, let's go ahead and listen in. Mr. Kringle was taken in for questioning in connection with Operation Toys for Tots. During the course of questioning, he admitted that he had posed for pictures with countless children, some as young as one year old, often with the consent of their parents, and sometimes meeting in public places, including shopping malls, to do so. It was during the course of this investigation that we matched a DNA swab from Mr. Kringle to DNA found on John Bonet's body. We also matched red wool fibers found in the fireplace to a suit Mr. Kringle owns and believe he entered the home through the chimney and became irate when he couldn't find cookies or milk. At that point, Mr. Kringle was confronted by the victim who inquired about a pony that she had requested for Christmas. This prompted Mr. Kringle to become extremely violent and the encounter eventually ended with her strangulation. Mr. Kringle then hid the body in the basement in an attempt to cover his tracks. We've spoken to the med medical examiner and... Now, Kringle's attorney has denied these charges, saying his client had had plenty of cookies and milk through the course of the evening, would likely be presented with them at the next house he visited, and had no reason to react violently to the lack of snacks in the Ramsey home. Officials suspect that elevated blood sugar due to excessive candy cane and sugar plum consumption may have played a role in the killing. Absent a toxicology report, it's something they'll have to work hard to prove in court. Uh, Kringle is, is Kringle is currently being held without bail, so for right now at least, it's looking like toys may be going undelivered and Christmas wishes unfulfilled this year. In the Gingerbread Garden section of the North Pole, Jack Frost, North Pole News. Thanks, Jack, and we'll have more on that tonight at 11. We take you now to the Savage Crew's Christmas Spectacular, A Very Savage Christmas. You're listening to the Savage Santa. It's not a podcast. It's not a half cast. It's just a quick shot to the balls to help you finish off the week. We're cutting through the bullshit, filling your Friday with rage fueled logic, and cracking a few jokes along the way. So grab a bag of frozen peas. There's a savage sack tap coming your way. All right, we're, uh, we're we're rolling, fuckers. Here we uh, here we go. Uh, welcome. I gotta take. I gotta take it. All right, welcome. If you're listening for the first time, this is the Savage Sack Tap. This is the family edition. We've got my brother Jackie and and Joey are here. If Joey put the fucking phone down and pick up his mic. Um, I'm the sister, of Jackie. Just well, to be clear, she's a brother. It's it's hotly contested. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, we figured we'd fuck around and tell some some old family. Um, Christmas stories real quick so the f first time you're listening check us out on Facebook www.facebook.com slash the savage crew um, I'm on Twitter at Mike Montone you should absolutely follow me there I say a lot of really horrible dark things we have a YouTube channel but it sucks so don't worry about that and I'm on Instagram too just search the savage crew you'll find it's a picture of 
pretty much anywhere you're looking for us, if you look for a, a picture of Pat, uh, Pat Bateman and the name The Savage Crew, you'll find us. So that's that. Uh, it's a Christmas tradition in the Montone house, Jackie and Joey, to on Christmas Eve read Twas the Night Before Christmas. I, I'm not even sure how this got started. I think it, the book was given to me as a gift when I was like in kindergarten and that the drunk adults forced me to read it and it was just it just became a fucking thing. So in in the spirit of that and in the spirit of this Christmas, I've I've done a rewrite of the poem and we'd like to we'd like to share it with you now. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house. Brother Joey was prancing in a red and green br- blouse, <laughs> not sitting for a second in our big easy chair. The residue from cocaine coated his nose hair. Out back in the yard, inside the shed, his friend Ross was waiting for a Christmas Eve head. <laughs> Come here, he said, put your face in my lap. I'll bust the load down your throat before taking a nap. Joey stroked and he sucked and said, what's the matter? It's never taken this long for you to spill baby batter. <laughs> Shut up, little twink. Don't give me that sass, or I'll tweet all those pictures of my dick in your ass. You ain't here to talk. Your job is to blow. (laughs) Sorry, he sniffed. Too much Colombian snow. Shut up and suck, you wayfish queer. I'll soak you with jizz from your chin to your ear. With a flick of a wrist, he worked on that dick. Covered in saliva, it was throbbing and slick. And then, like old faithful, Ross finally came. Joey lapped it all up without an ounce of shame. After snorting his cocaine and giving Ross head, he ate calamari and hot garlic bread. He guzzled <laughs> some wine and had a martini, <laughs> then opened up Grinder in search of more weenies. <laughs> Always on your phone, our grandmother cried. Sorry, Nani, he said. This helps me find guys. Arab or Israeli, Muslim or Jew, I'll fuck either one and Asian <laughs> dudes too. <laughs> My son is a twink. Dad said it's the truth. His phone full of dick pics and plenty of, is plenty of proof. <laughs> and then through the door, Santa came with a bound. I tried your chimney, he said, but my ass is too round. I just robbed some family. It was an absolute hoot to watch the kids cry as I grabbed all their loot. I'll head to the pawn shop and trade them this pack. They'll give me some money. I'll spend it on crack. <laughs> my pupils will dilate. My mood will be merry. I'll head back to the workshop and bust some elf cherry. <laughs> Joey, give me a bump. Ross said you've got blow. <laughs> Need to let off some steam. Job pressure, you know. He snorted a line and grinded his teeth. A confession, he said. I wiped my ass with your reed. <laughs> I couldn't find TP. The poop was quite smelly. I'm sorry, Santa cried. Too much milk in my belly. <laughs> a satisfying dump, said the coked up old elf. I really had to go. There was no stopping myself. He pulled out a pistol, put it straight to his head. I could end all this misery with one round of lead. Santa squeezed on the trigger, but the gun didn't work. He laughed till he cried. It ain't loaded, you jerk. He sniffed one more line up into his nose. Then off of the couch, the fat bastard rose. I wish I could stay. You guys are all right, but I'm going to Newark to host a cock fight. So Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Oh yes, Merry I think Christmas the uh, the very very liberal key relative who uh, who first gave us that book would not be pleased with that reading. But uh, that was well, some of our Christmases. Yeah, that that, that was pretty much along the lines. Yeah, I was trip down memory lane. I was thinking about sure. that uh, <laughs> the other day when I was like doing the show prep for this. I was like, we've got to be the only family who inside of. And this is inside of a single holiday season, can have incidents involving cocaine, driving under the influence, uh, <laughs> stolen street signs, and strippers. Multiple street signs. That's, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, I wanted to touch on multiple before. strippers. Well. There were two holidays. there. Well, there have been, yeah, there have been a few incidents. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll get to this. So, since we're going to SantaCon today, I figured I wanted to, I needed to fucking clear the air about this shit. This is driving me nuts. Have you guys seen these? What we got? This, these fucking cunty bastards in the city. These motherfuckers are so joyless. They do it every year. They try to, they try to protest and get SantaCon canceled. Who's enforcing this? Like nobody. Why are they it's no okay. Congregating in SantaCon. Okay, so like, here's. What's gonna happen? So this is all right. Here's the best part. So they were they were trying to get um, 
like sort of like a viral thing going and convince people not to SantaCon mm-hmm. because they're a bunch of grumpy cunts who don't like anyone having fun. So they posted the fake flyers and they've they're protesting today at Union Square. So we should totally roll through there all decked out like Santa when we go into the city. Or stop Union Square. These people can't really cancel SantaCon. Right? No, they have no. no they just have the, Photoshop. You know what? No, you know what's awesome about the First Amendment is that it protects your right to get to get dressed and walk around as Santa Claus. That's the founding fathers yeah, were, were onto some they shit. They say what they had in mind, I believe. <laughs> That's what, right. yeah. Je- Jefferson and Franklin were big SantaCon guys. <laughs> but listen to these fucking assholes. We've we have reached out to organizers and asked them to cancel, but have not heard back. We hope they will come to their senses. We hope the organizers hear us loud and clear and are aware that we will be out in force tomorrow to stop ca- to stop SantaCon if they don't cancel. You know what I hate about shit like this? It's like, you put all this energy into stopping a bar crawl. Like, you, there's nothing else going on in the world today that you could have put that energy towards, but just to prevent some people from drinking around Christmas time? The fuck, yeah. no, the, and the shit of it is, these, it's not like, like, these news stories make it sound like this is like a big fuck, like a, an Eric Garner death, like, type protest where they're gonna be flooding the streets. It's going to be two dozen jerk-offs standing in Union Square while a bunch of drunk Santa Clauses walk past them and, like, piss and fucking puke everywhere. <laughs> Joey looks like Look he's like you have something deeply on your mind, Joey. Yeah, no, I'm just entertained by the fact that these people think they have this type of authority. Dude, they do it every... I get into shit with them on Twitter every year. I fucking got and into I it. I did. I did see you going back and forth with some people on Twitter about this. I, I go start canceling things. I feel just <laughs> you should cancel, cancel, okay. try to cancel the gay pride parade. Oh, okay. I feel like the Macy's parade or something like that. Put, no, just put a, canceled. Put a big, put a big fucking picture of Trump up <laughs> because it'll drive them fucking insane. <laughs> and just have it say gay gay pride parade. Yeah, no, let's canceled. make that official right now. The Where gay uh, pride parade is official. That's it. We have canceled. It, you, you no congregate. Have no gay people can congregate. <laughs> the gay pride parade is canceled. Oh, they can keep doing the public sex acts. I won't. I won't cancel that. Anymore. Is that on that list? It's on the list. No That's. I was. I shit you not. I, I was walking. Have private no sex. Congre- we, have, we should read what's on this. No congregating in Santa costumes. No throwing up on the sides of buildings. Oh, this is all right. Yo, you kind of don't have control over that at a certain point. No All right. public sex acts and no excessive drinking. Okay, so listen to this. Listen to their reasoning for wanting SantaCon, for for holding this protest and wanting SantaCon canceled. I stand with them. Just, Look at just the, this. For the record. This fucking line is tremendous. Our country feels so divided right now that we are all searching for things that unify us. Amen. The one thing that I have found that we all have in common is our disdain. For SantaCon. Over the past few years, myself and others have witnessed several horrible acts, including, but not limited to, sex acts in aisle four of the Dwayne Reed on 14th and 3rd. Oh, By the way, hey, a uh, uh, big savage sack tack shout out to whoever's doing it in aisle four of the Dwayne Reed on 14th and 3rd. Hey, if this van's rocking, don't come a knocking. Uh, <laughs> countless fist fights. And excessive vomiting. What the fucking asshole? I would agree that our collective disdain for SantaCon is the glue that's holding our country together. In light of in, li- in light of so. her her loss. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. She almost made her story. <laughs> All right. Is there um before before we move on, I, Jackie? You're an easily annoyed person. Is there any yeah. holiday behavior that just absolutely fucking grinds your shit? I mean, it. <laughs> I, ha- I do what most things annoy me. I guess this uh, this year um, specifically, this isn't like an individual act. This like politicalness that people are trying to put around the Starbucks cup. Oh fuck! Is, is this like it happens like Didn't every this year? Happen last it year, happens yeah. every year. I'm by the way. Uh, Christian wackos drive me nuts, but I'm all in on them defending Christmas. Yeah, and but I just like. They, I usually, like, you just get the cup, it's red, it's good time, you know, Christmas time. This year they put something out around, like, Thanksgiving, maybe a little earlier, and it was just this ugly, like, green I shit. think they, ca- didn't they cave and bring back the yeah, red cup, though? Yeah, they did, but it's like, I see people on Twitter threatening each other's lives over this cup. If fucking, if Kevin McAllister has, has taught us anything, it's that you don't fuck with Christmas. 
Just keep the fucking Christmas shit. Like everyone likes Christmas. It's not even it's not even a religious holiday anymore. It's just fucking it's literally just spending money, getting drunk, and dressing in red and green for a month. Anyone can do it. Yeah. It's, it's like when like you like in those like TV shows and movies when you go back when you go back in time and you don't you don't fuck with the past, you don't fuck with history. Yeah, you don't the same way with Christmas. You don't go Christmas back to the back. you don't go back to the Cretaceous era and uh, and kill a mosquito. Yeah. Yeah, just make sure you keep that uh mic. No, it doesn't have to be like inches away from your face like a cock. Just make sure I, you're directing your speech towards it. I also have um, an issue, which may make me sound like a pretty bad person, but um, every time I go to like a CVS or a Dwayne Reed where they ask me to donate like a dollar to something, and like I go to these places a lot, you know? So I just feel like there's a lot of pressure on you to donate that yeah. dollar. And when you say no, like I, you just feel like an asshole. I think I need them to you stop just doing that. You feel like you're being shamed. Yeah, I do. You feel like you're being shamed. Yeah. I always, I say, it, I, I just say no. Yeah. I give them a, gr- a very grim look and I say that I don't that says this man does not give a f- <laughs> give one single fuck about <laughs> children with leukemia. Yeah. It's always like St. Jude that I just go, ah, not today. I just yeah. laugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's been my not line. Today. That's been my line for like the past like four years whenever they try getting I feel so bad like, for uh you know what I've realized? It must suck to be a panhandler now because everybody pays for everything with pla- uh plastic. Yeah. Like, I, I don't mind giving, like, a couple bucks to a homeless guy if, if he asks for it or whatever, like, some change. But I don't, like, I have said sorry, sorry, nothing today to the same fucking guy up on Washington Street uh, every day. I, Five days. I have to also actually, an easy cop-out for people who carry cash just to I have say. To, I, have to, I have to alter my route to avoid him because I'm starting to feel awkward about not having any porters to I put in his coffee cup. I get yelled at on my way to work on 8th Ave. I think it's, like, 40 fourth and eighth every day by the same homeless guy because I don't have any cash for him. It's not a lot. I don't have any cash. You, you should be bringing it by this point. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 like the the teacher, it's like when the teacher, it's like when the, it's like when the teacher says you can't hand in assignments written in pencil. Yeah, I haven't learned. By, yeah, it's the third week of September. You should know by now. Maybe this is why he's upset with What me. was the point of that, buddy? What the fuck is fucking teachers are assholes? They're always on power like, trips. Go back and erase the answers. Yeah, they need no, it's just because teachers are. It's it's it has nothing to do with any of that. It's because teachers are dicks. I don't know. Joey used to get tests back, erase his answers, and rewrite the right answer all the time. So that's probably actually. Why yeah, I don't. Uh, that couldn't have been. Yeah, but that's just because you have like that was just like a, a freak teacher. If, <laughs> and if and if but yeah and if by the way if you're if you're a teacher accepting homework as like tests being s- submitted and all of a sudden. Everything with an X next to it has a racer mark. This one kid, this has a has a racer marks and a fucking and a, and a correct answer. Contest. Maybe, maybe you should think about about not fixing well, that grade I, I, for that student. I think student. he got fired like a year later. <laughs> yeah, he didn't get that. <laughs> All right, and and with that, since we veered uh, completely off the Christmas subject. Um, we got to take a, a quick word from a, a PSA uh, from a charity that we've uh, recently partnered with. Please consider donating to these guys. It's a very good, very important cause, and we will be back in a minute. Every year, millions of men around the world reach full sexual maturity with a penis that's less than four inches long. For decades, Cox of Love has helped those men afford surgery that can give them the adequately sized genitals they so desperately need. Now all of the Fräulein say Hans has the uber bratwurst. I used to have a dreidel, now I'm slinging brisket. Before Cox of Love, I was small, like the meerkat. Now the Kimbe is long like the giraffe. The ladies call me the king of the jungle. Yeah, well, I used to fire off rounds from a derringer. Now I'm packing a big old Texas-sized AR-15. Now, another group needs your help. I came in from a long day at the toy shop to find my wife in bed with Rudolph and the abominable snowman. On average, Santa's elves have some of the tiniest penises on the planet. And because of their tiny, fragile elfin bodies, Enlargement surgery requires special equipment and often becomes a pricey affair. I was working hard to fill Santa's sleigh. They were in my bedroom, filling my wife. This year for the holidays, consider making your donation where it counts. To Cox of Love. 
It took three days for the hoof prints on my wife's back to fade. They even finished all of my cookies and milk. Cox of Love is a 501c charitable organization, and we guarantee that any donations made between November 1st and December 31st will go to help the elfin community. Thanks to Cox of Love, my sapling is now a Douglas fir. Donate to Cox of Love right now by dialing 1-800-BIG-COCK. That's 1-800-B-I-G-C-O-C-K. And come up big for one of Santa's little helpers. Put the fucking phone down, Joey. I believe, as we discussed in the night before Christmas, this is how he meets a guy. Yeah, it's how he, he's cruising for it's fucking... 2016. He's <laughs> looking at... To go to a bar to he's, he, he's looking at Julian's greased up eight inch fucking grinder. Francisco. 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 Um, yeah, please consider donating to Cox of Love. They're doing very important work. The you elves. Said, uh, you the, said off air that you would get me your contact there. I, I d well, I, I can't. For, uh, a friend of mine. Uh, yeah, I, I can, uh, I can put you in touch with, uh, with a few people who will. Uh, now, who, you just got who can the, give you a few inches. You got the CVS and Dwayne Reed behind this charity. <laughs> Perhaps more people would be, people people be at the yeah. Uh, you go, you go, you check out, and uh, you buy your. Uh, what do people buy? I wouldn't even fucking buy anything. Cream. I what would you buy at Dwayne? You could buy a lot of shit it's at just like the drugstore now. Yeah, it's like if you forgot like milk. Or I, bought eggs at, I bought yeah. eggs at I bought eggs at CVS the other day. I feel bad. Twenty bucks. Like it's coming back to me. I feel bad. I feel bad admitting that I bought eggs at fucking CVS. I once bought an egg at Quick Check. It's a double pack of plastic wrapped eggs, and I. I <laughs> sat in my car alone and ate them. And yeah, Joey gets like uh, the hard oh, I've eggs in a that. bag. I've gotten that before the gym before. Oh, yeah. That's so yeah. Nervous. Um anyway, all right. Well, I th it's it's hard to appreciate how fucked up the holidays around our house have actually been. Yeah. yeah. Um I actually feel like like Thanksgiving has taken like a, a back seat. It it has we've regard. we've toned it down just cuz we all we're all like adults with jobs now, so it's it's harder to like black the fuck out the night before Thanksgiving and then go out again. Like we used, it used to be pretty much Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, we would just true. black out drunk for seventy two hours, which I did do. Uh, right after getting back from Iraq, we did we did Thanksgiving in Taipei, Taiwan, and honestly, probably it's unfortunate that you guys weren't with us because this might be one of the best Montone holiday stories ever. Where um, I just checked back in with, into this unit out on Okinawa, and our our adjutant uh, was his job. But we called him because Adj rhymes with Vag. We would call uh, him the Vag. Hilarious. So the fucking Vag is he's this guy from Connecticut. He's got this incredibly squealy, nasally voice, and he, like when he speaks, he sounds like Porky Pig getting getting fucked in the ass, like. Montone, I'm getting fucking laid tonight. You're a fucking pussy, man. Go on, get laid. You fucking, <laughs> like, it's, like, fucking super irritating, too. Like, especially if he's trying to talk shit and you hear him. You just want to fucking smash him in the face. Anyway, he, uh, we were both in the same room. We were like, all right, fuck it. Like, we, we were buddies. We would go out to, uh, fly out to, uh, Taipei with a couple of our other friends. And we got out there. We'd been up for 06 PT that morning. So it was, like, 10 o'clock at night. I'd been drinking all day. I was like, you know what, I'm... I'm calling it. I'm going home. And we were hanging out at... There's a, a lot of Europeans do, like, their study abroad in Asia. So we were, he was trying to pick up on, like, you know, like, British chicks and shit. He gets wasted. This guy is complete fucking... Yeah, com <laughs> complete fucking lush. Gets wasted. And this group of, like, five Filipino chicks approaches him and starts... He starts buying him drinks. And he's like, yeah, I'm the fucking... I'm, I'm the big man. I'm the American man. Like I'm fucking. I'm gonna sling some dick. Like uh, fucking. Going. He's gonna get down on. Yeah, he's gonna get down some <laughs> yeah, sideways right. badge. So he's got a tab open at the bar, and he goes in a back room with these chicks, and he's telling me the story the next day. Like jump forward to the ne the next day, I wake up to we had we got like a suite for a hotel room, and there was a living room, and our buddy Bono's chilling in the living room, and the badge walks in. He's like, "Hey, Bono," and like he introduces Bono. <laughs> not the not the real one. The, the, that AIDS guy. He was in he was in Africa at the time. Anyway, <laughs> like he introduces like <coughs> he 
he's got these two Asian chicks with him, the Filipino chicks from the bar. And he's like, yeah, I, I had an orgy last night. What do you think of that? And Bono's just like, ah, it's cool. Like, nice to meet you, ladies. Like, he's like, yeah, and I was telling they, uh, they just fucked a future U.S. senator. And I'm in the, fu- you know when you're, you can hear someone talking and you're like, at, like the morning after drinking and it's someone who did something to piss you off. It's like, you know, I'm not, I'm going to pretend I'm still sleeping yeah. and just quietly spite this person in my own head. I was like, fuck this motherfucker. He did not. I was like, there's more to this story when I am, when I'm, you know, spry and ready for the day. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Anyway, he, the door opens. Like, hey, Manta, you know, I had an orgy last night. What do you think of that? And like, it was early enough that I could just play off the still sleeping thing. So I just, fuck it. I didn't say a word. But we're gonna do some some sightseeing that day, so we had to get we all had to get cash. So we go uh, we go to the ATM, and he's trying and trying and trying. He can't can't get any money out. I'm like, come on, hurry the fuck up! Like, we're going to get to the fucking thing. Taipei 101 is like is like their version of the World Trade Center, but still standing. And uh, they uh, you can like go to the top and like you look out against the glass and all, all that shit. So I'm like, I want to go do this. I'm hungover. Like, I need an activity to take my mind off of the ringing fucking headache. <laughs> this motherfucker can't get a cent out of the ATM. So he calls his bank, and they're like, um, yeah, Mr. Smith, you spent $20,000 last night. He's like, oh my God, what, are we, what the hell are you talking about? I didn't spend up to $20,000. It was like a, it was like listening to like one of those rap DJs just scratch a fucking needle back and forth. It's a high pitched squealing, um, like a like a fucking like pig being gutted and cleared out before they uh, you know peel off the delicious you paid like bacon. Ten thousand dollars per minute. Sex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it turns out that the women that he had his orgy with were actually a band of Filipino hookers. And while they were they were group sucking him off, so I don't think he actually fucked. I think he said like they were all just taking turns like sucking his dick and like you know like feeling him up and like you know giving him lap dance. Like it was like it was a very it was sexual activity. I don't want to give him a technical orgy on it, but it sounds like a very weird scenario. <laughs> it yeah. sounds like I mean it, it sounds like five hookers distracting was this a guy in your yeah. hotel room. No, it was at it was like in a back room at the bar in Asia. If if a hooker if you want you can bang a hooker in a bar in Asia. Like they'll come up to you be like yeah. like they'll start yeah they'll start like grabbing your your dick and then like. They'll, 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 they will start jerking you well, off you at the bar. And have public sex? Because I want to know how it compares to SantaCon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, out of the, the fucking East Village Alliance that's boycotting SantaCon would not be, would be none too pleased with what goes <laughs> on <laughs> in, in, in Pacific Rim drinking establishments. They need a much longer flyer. <laughs> 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 nice. Um, <laughs> so anyway. But yeah, like you can get... Um, you could like they'll start jerking you like under the table and then they'll like kind of whisper in your ear like oh like you want fuck me like and then they'll like they'll if you're like yeah they'll be like okay like and they'll just take you to a back room and there's usually like a you know like a bed with a mattress and shit it's a very depressing scene yeah we'll do yeah we'll we'll do we'll do thailand stories another day but but anyway so um while while they were distracting him with with their mouth fucks the bartender was at the bar with the card calling all of his buddies at, like, fucking auto body repair shops, cell phone stores, fucking everywhere around town, just giving out this credit card information and running up tabs like a motherfucker. <laughs> and then and then the vag, you know, signs for it at the end at the end of the night. But, I mean, he got he got cleared on the cash, but he had, they had to cancel the card. And we were living in the South Pacific, so for, like, two weeks... He didn't have any way to get fucking money, so we had no, we had, no Bank of America. <laughs> not, no, they did Yeah, they'd say yeah. like they have one, but like it's like this like the bootleg version where all they can do is call America and tell them and to send you a new gonna card. Rob you too. Yeah, like you can do. You're fucked. Like you can do nothing. I like so, trust any of them. this yeah, was great. Either. So we had this annoying motherfucker by the balls for the next two weeks. And then the the coup de gras of all of this is that a couple weeks later he goes to medical because it was burning when he peed. <laughs> so the very bitches that robbed his credit card also gave him the clap. Wow, because I, I I pictured clean women when you told them that story. <laughs> well, they had a bed with a mattress. I yeah. thought these are classy. Hey, hey. <laughs> most of them, I will say this: most 
most hookers will make you wrap it up. That, which is fair. Yeah. That's fair. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like you sound like my fucking boss when I, when I say something perplexing to him. Huh. 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 Not sure what to make of that. Huh. 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 Well, it's, I feel like Bob Jones probably get that reaction a lot. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's like, I don't know huh. what to say. Why did he just say huh. that? <laughs> you, mean, you mean on Thanksgiving, your grandmother walked in on you taking a shit? <laughs> It, huh. it was, <laughs> yeah, you know, it wasn't how it was supposed to play out. How was it supposed to go down? Well, uh, my old man, our old man, had had a thing for uh, bathing, it, bathing or soaking, as he called it, with the door a door unlocked. So you you would know he was soaking, and you would walk into the bathroom. And he'd be in there butt naked, no bubbles or anything, just clear just, water. Yeah, just, just, just and, chilling in clear and water. Water. And a flaccid dick that was, kind of floated yeah, like in the was, water. Like, best, he was, you know? like he was basking yeah. in the Dead Sea. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, and, and then the hot, the hot tub on the roof of their uh, beach house. You go up there sometimes. I, he didn't I've never seen him naked, naked up there. Were there naked? But he, yeah, he used to bathe naked. Sorry, Dad, if I'm oh. in your spot. I thought, that, oh. like, I thought they knew. I thought they knew. <laughs> oh. I thought that this was common that. knowledge. I can't go in that hot tub away. Yeah, yeah he's, you, he won't have. let you go in that hot we tub. Hot tub. We got a new hot tub. Yeah, no, but and you don't think he's doing you, the same thing yeah. in that I thought we all knew. <laughs> he won't <laughs> let you go in the hot tub with fucking sunscreen on. Yeah. He makes you rinse off. <laughs> he's bare ass in it. <laughs> I thought everyone knew. <laughs> I digress. I, I I had I had planned for uh, a few weeks prior to the holidays. I just it had nothing to do with the holidays. It was payback to, time. It was payback time. <laughs> it just happened to coincide with the holidays, and I wanted was, to say I think it was Thanksgiving. I was taking my dumps with the door unlocked so that he would inevitably at some point walk in on me taking a dump, <laughs> and I could say gotcha. So the big dad, reveal. The yeah. door swings open, and it's Joey dropping a steamer. I'm so. glad the dad regrets this. <laughs> oh, dude, every day. I mean, financially, yeah. uh, psychologically, yeah. just fucking everything. This dump happened, uh, Was it was Thanksgiving, right? It was late. It was very late in Thanksgiving. We so had, we'd been eating all day. Yeah, we'd been eating all day, and, then, and we were back on the, the terrace, so we had, like, a bunch of the neighbors had been over drinking with us and stuff, because I know, like, I know Sean was there, because yeah. we had the, the Dick classic was photograph. The um, and uh, so I was taking my a, a late evening dump while everyone was... Drinking and doing their thing, mingling around the house, and uh, right. I heard the door right. open, and the you know my initial tree. thought is, "This is it. This is the moment I've been waiting for, and it couldn't have happened at a better time. I've got an audience." <laughs> and uh, in comes Mike and Tuttle, storming, storming in with my grandma. <laughs> Forcing her to watch me take a shit. <laughs> oh, oh, that makes us look so fucking bad. <laughs> that that's There's like a classic photograph that I I don't know where. Oh, in the mirror, yeah. Yes. In the oh, mirror, shit. Of, like tunnel and naughty. It's that's yeah. fucking amazing. Yeah. 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 I think it's shit. People are holding naughty and stuff, and, and like there's me shitting. Oh my god. Well, you don't see me shitting in the photo. That's the best part about that is that it that's like a minor. A minor Christmas, like a holiday. Yeah, incident. this yeah. blew over in like two minutes. It was yeah. just like, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. She saw you. Yeah. She saw you pinching off a loaf. Yeah, even though it was over, she no was like, She was back to being like a drunk, drunk grandma. Yeah, I was gonna say that, that's pretty tame because it hasn't. Uh, get your hand off the. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. No, but that's pretty tame story. You know, nobody really got angry about that. No, no. The it was most lots of laughs. I think the the two most times we inspired the most to anger on Thanksgiving were. I'd say the the stop sign and Joey falling asleep in the fucking parking. The stop sign was like the start of it all. That I feel like that was really the, like the beginning. The stop. Well, we were because that was like when we were all uh, fully maturing as a. Yeah, that was shenanigans dance. round two. We had a couple earlier incidences which were more Christmas related, um, which I guess we got we got coming up in a little bit. We're gonna talk about those, but the the stop sign was like the ultimate. Like we're we're all back home in that like. The other shit happened when you guys would be home for, like, break. I'm talking about a different stop sign. <laughs> You're talking about the street sign. The street sign. Yeah, that's, that's what kicked it all Yeah, off, that's, that's a different one. The stop sign, though, was... was <laughs> I, I, I think the, all sorts of signs. I think the stop sign was arguably <laughs> like funnier because of the way we got caught. We, we, um, we have a laziness. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got... Uh, there's... We were at there's a bar in our, our hometown called Fort Apache and it's a it's like a fucking it's a dive. It's a dive where people get punched in the face and stabbed and you can do cocaine openly in the bathroom and 
I just it's imagine every ounce of fuckery and shenanigans possible and it, it's just lawless it's like a little slice of the wild west in suburbia and i fucking love it and we go there a lot on the holidays so <coughs> we're walking home and there's a stop sign just must have snapped it, i don't know if it got like uprooted or snapped out of its like yeah, it was mooring or whatever but yeah it, it was on the ground it's pulling one of those things out of the fucking ground like exactly. strong enough and i yeah. wasn't gonna um, <laughs> certainly not but so we carry it home and to understand the way our garage was set up is to understand how a number of these incidents came to fuck us over <laughs> because that door creaked yeah. like a motherfucker when you opened it. Like this thing hadn't, it was like an old barn door style garage and it, uh, our underneath f- our parents' bedroom. Yeah, right underneath our parents' bedroom. And our father is far... Fa- no one would ever accuse him of being a handyman. So the thought of the thought of this fucking torn part. the thought of the, yeah fuck, well yeah he's he's dished it out good well, enough. And let's say like the mom is not the most organized person. No, no. So it's like you have the creaky door. And it would open like, and that was one, and then you walk in, and you would like walk into a lawnmower. Yeah, you'd fucking walk into a lawnmower that had empty beer cans stacked on it yeah. next to a hockey stick that, that was leaned precariously up against like a rack of aluminum baseball bats. We had a lot bats. of hockey equipment for a bunch of kids who didn't play hockey. Well, I, I played. I played until like ninth grade. And yeah, then, but this is like yeah. we used to just invite, this we used to invite the neighbors Four. over to play just so we could beat them up. <laughs> We'd so we could beat up it's specifically the Jewish ones. <laughs> it is a Christmas special after all. So fucking, yeah. Oh, uh, we should probably uh, formally apologize to the case, but uh, in any case, no, no, no. no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> holy shit! Yeah, we made the uh, we made we made the, the Yom Kippur war look like a fucking picnic. Uh, <laughs> We're we're not anti Semites, by the way. I just assholes. I have slept, I have slept with and left a number of Jewish women completely unsatisfied. So, <laughs> uh, in any case, the door creaks like a motherfucker, and you knocked. You take one. St- you can't. There's no light. It's not like this is not a modern garage. Yeah, where, a light. It was just at the like end a li- of the yeah. garage. By the time you got and, there, yeah, you, you have to go through yeah. an Indiana Jones style maze to get to it, and then you have to dig through like. This shelf where she kept like <laughs> gardening shears and like a fucking like jagged yeah, rake, a lot like of sharp, yeah, was, to turn the, turn the fucking the lights on. Like they made it as hard as possible to hang out in that garage yeah, it was like as they booby could. traps. It was like some Home Alone shit. To so get into our imagine house. two drunk dickheads at three o'clock in the morning trying to walk in there with a seven foot long stop sign attached <laughs> to a fucking pole. It didn't work out well. Before, so we tried to go in, and then I think we tried to bring it. I think we tried to bring it in through the living room too at some point, <laughs> and that might have been when mom caught us. Well, and the back door was the greatest. Yeah. Uh, oh like yeah, easiest entry. Point. That's when they fucking they went fucking ballistic. They were we had very slammable doors in that house. I was pretty. I was I was blacked out. Dude, they were. <laughs> that was the. That might so be. Joey didn't really yell at because he doesn't remember. Closer, closer than when we brought the the strippers over. That might have been like the closest we ever got when we were younger to getting kicked out of the house. Oh, uh, when they pretended that we were gonna have to pay rent. They were fucking. <laughs> they were fired. Up. Do you remember? The, we the only thing that saved us is that they went down to LBI the next day, and dad the dad fucking called me. And I guess he's like, I talked to a, I talked to the neighbor who's a lawyer. He's like, he's like, if someone runs a stop sign. And is killed. You could both be charged as an accessory to murder. So you better put you better put the stop sign back where you found it, or wherever you ripped it from the ground. Because people are gonna talk, and they're gonna know who took the stop sign. I was like, I would have blamed Smith. I would have <laughs> fucking. <laughs> First of all, who the I'm fuck is jail. who the fuck is talking <laughs> about like jail. like I think it's like this fucking like old western ta- like frontier town of the eighteen hundreds <laughs> like you hear the Mountain boys they fucking ran off with a stop sign <laughs> well, damn that- whole damn towns turned lawless ever since they rolled into town <laughs> <laughs> fucking. <laughs> 
Well, but yeah, dad was always like zero to a hundred with like worst case scenario. <laughs> Something you'd never think would be a result of stealing a stop, a stop sign. Do he on a regular on a regular basis? He would he would tell us that our behavior made us like an accessory to some kind of yeah. crime. Yeah. He was probably right yeah, after thirty. Yeah, I don't think he's wrong about those. So he's fucking like he's like he's like we're going to be home on Sunday. The stop sign better be put back. So I fucking I had I had Tuttle <laughs> fucking I put the stop sign in the back of the Civic. <laughs> it was hanging out. I had it. I didn't want this uh the red part to hang out because I figured that would call too much attention to the car if we saw a cop. So I had it like angled across the back seat and and me and Tuttle drove around the corner down to like you know where like she went to like Midwood. Yeah. Yeah, I fucking we just I was just like, alright Tuttle, just fucking drop that thing on a lawn. Let's get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Just walk down the street a little bit quicker. Uh, I think we were worried about because then we would have been walking around with it on our shit. Like, yeah, there was just too much exposure. Daytime. Yeah, daytime. So I was just like, we just looped her. No, we did it at night. We yeah. um, we did it like at like two in the morning. We just like just I was just like like, like Tuttle left at like ten. I was like Tuttle, come back at two a.m. We're gonna fucking we're gonna ride out with this thing. We're gonna just drop it on a fucking like I was gonna toss it in the woods, but I was like, you know what? The old man's crafty. He might fuck. He might. He might decide to take a wood yeah. stroll, <laughs> and if he comes upon a stop sign, we're fucked. And you get pretty dirty during a wood stroll. You might have to take a soak. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have to? Like, you always have to the phone, right? When yeah. Name? If the phone rang, I mid soak. <laughs> call oh, him, the, call the old him, portable wait. phone. There's no yeah. such thing as call you back. Later. Yeah. Oh, he's busy right now. <laughs> he's busy right now. Look, I I can't bring it in because I'm gonna see his cock, and I don't want I don't want to see my dad. My dad's cocks uh, <laughs> fucking floating in a warm bath, so uh, oh, he's gonna call you back. <laughs> <laughs> this is Joey Montone. Who's calling? <laughs> calling for your father? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they used to make us answer the phone and say say our name. And Did they really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh Jack fuck Tom no! Tom no we were... and ask who's calling. We yeah. just have like the biggest loser. Like, right, yeah, no, we we were, yeah, I remember that when we were young. <laughs> remember when? Uh, do remember when fucking mom tried to push the fucking. The safe space in the house, and she got she got shouted down, <laughs> and now it's now it's just a widespread thing on college campuses. <laughs> so if you, I, I know I know my I know most of the people who listen to this fucking hate campus safe spaces. Our mother was taking like childhood psych courses uh, because she was getting her, her teaching degree when we were growing up, and she decided she wanted to turn our home into a safe space where no one could mock or ridicule each other. And the other four members of the family laughed and shouted and her down. Mocked and ridiculed her. <laughs> we, mocked, we mocked and ridiculed her for not wanting to be mocked and ridiculed. I think the only other time that they were even remotely as pissed off on a Thanksgiving, because there were Christmas instances where they flew off the fucking handle. But, uh, oh, you gotta take a You can yeah. say that you have to take a piss. I gotta pee. I didn't know how it worked with the mics. Yeah, no, you can say you have rules. to take a piss. I didn't know what the rules were. That's a fucking podcast. Yeah, I'm gonna take a, Mike, can I go pee? Yeah, you can yeah, go, go pee. No. Raise, raise your hand first. Right? We'll give you the whole I'm a pass. fucking... I'm a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like I'm a dominant... Pee my like, hand like I'm a, one of those weird kids. <laughs> like I'm a dominatrix who denies you urinary rights. <laughs> um, the, uh... Well, he's pissing. The time Joey fucking passed out after Fort Apache... Like, he drew... Drove and parked his fucking car. Which was actually a responsible decision. The most, yeah, he drove like a block, realized yeah. he couldn't, and said, fuck it, like, I'm just gonna sleep it off for a few hours, but we'll let him, because t- that was... And I don't know, that, that argument really flew with mom and dad. They fu- no, the worst part about that was that they ate all the fucking, they, they took all, they yeah, absconded they t- with the leftovers. <laughs> they took the leftovers down the street. There's the worst... That was Thanksgiving. Oh. Yeah. That was the worst fucking punishment you could... Meet out on on Thanksgiving is to is to run off with the leftovers. Uh, for the record, I was was the designated driver that night, <laughs> and I did <laughs> not <laughs> drunk drive. Sounds- I <laughs> fell asleep. I fell. I waited in my own car with the heat on in the Ford Apache <laughs> parking lot. For my taxi to arrive. So, why would the why, whoa, 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 whoa. why would the designated driver, if he didn't drink, need to wait for a because taxi? Because the designated driver was being responsible after having a couple of Sounds drinks. Sounds like the designated driver. <laughs> Sounds like the, the, the designated <laughs> driver was <laughs> fucking. I was just designated the driver. No fucking one said I should have. <laughs> you, <laughs> you were fucking annihilated. Uh, I was like, and then I was like, all right, can I drive this thing home? And I was like, fuck no. Like I was like, I don't want to get fucking. 
it, like a DUI is the last thing I need right now. Like, so I was like, all right, you fuck, um, let's call a cab. We couldn't get through to a cab service, and this was before Uber was a thing. Yeah. So like, I was like, all right, Uber. shithead, like, let's walk. And he's like, he's, he just he just slept. In the, I was like, <laughs> so I, I I planned to call a cab from my car because I thought to myself it's too cold to walk, and Mike's wrong. We can find a cab if we try hard enough. <laughs> my mom always said, if I try hard enough, I can do anything. And look at you and now. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before I could call a cab, I fell asleep in my car for a few hours, and I uh, woke up in the Ford Apache parking lot. Kind of confused. <laughs> so I, I was like, oh, I guess I got to drive home. It's the morning. And I yeah, just started driving. I was like, I don't want to be driving right now. So I pulled over in a parking lot down the street, and I slept some more. Came home, and there were no leftovers. <laughs> yeah, because you didn't realize. Were you, did you sleep at home last night, or did you go to... Uh, Go that, back to home. That night, no, I, I stayed at mom and dad's and woke up to the lunch. Were you listening to... All right, so uh, t- to understand this, you got to understand how our, our parents moved into... Uh, they, you know, downsized from the house we grew up in with the uh, creaky garage door. They live um, in an apartment now, and it's got, like, the, you know, an office slash guest room that we use when we're there for the holidays. I fucking... I go home. They're flipping out because it's, like, th- 3 a.m., and I just came in without, without my brother. And, like, where is he? Like they're fucking demit, like demit. The, did he go back to Jersey City? Did he go back? I'm like, he's fucking. I, he's in. He's either sleeping it off in his car in the parking lot at at the bar, or he's in a cab on his way home. It's one of the two things. And fucking, they're just going fucking crazy. I'm like, are you fucking shit? They wanted me to like. They're demanding that we call our roommate, who at the time his family lived in Marlboro, so there's just no fucking way that. Stevie B knew where the fuck Joey was, and I'm like, all right, I'm I'm going in the guest room. Like I just, I I'm like I'm going to sleep. Like we're going out to look for your brother, and they were drive at four in the morning. They're driving the streets of Bergen County looking for Joey. So I'm like, I know they're gonna, they're not gonna find him. One, they're gonna come back furious too. So I'm locking the door and going to sleep. Lock, you lock them out of their apartment. Not not out of the well, they have a key to the apartment, yeah. but like to the little guest room. So I just oh, locked it and I went to sleep. And all of a sudden, I'm just woken up by this fucking, like, banging on the door. Like, he he locked the door. Like, they're fucking jiggling it. Like, they're like, he, that son of a bitch locked the door. Like, they're referring to me as a son of a bitch, which I think technically means they were referring to mom as a bitch. I always felt that way, that that insult was actually... Son of a bitch! Like, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, but they're fucking hammering on the door. Open the fucking door! It's not fucking funny! Open the fucking door! I went, all right, fine. <laughs> I open it. They're like, like, where is he? Like, he could be freezing to death. I was like, it's 45 degrees out. Yeah. I don't even know if that's biologically possible. Come they on. should have been more concerned about him killing himself in his about car. About slamming into, yeah. Like, we, we might have to start calling hospitals and police stations. I was like, I don't think you well, need they, to do that. Telling on me. <laughs> <laughs> the police station was always my first call when I couldn't find you. Was it really? <laughs> yeah, that was right. You were right. We were in Point Pleasant the one time we met. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's right. And how did that go? <laughs> uh, so, this was when we were walking down down Ocean Ave on our way to Jenks. I totally burned. And uh, yeah, Joey, uh, Joey had uh, done some substances. I got him excited for the night. This was a, a, a white Memorial Day weekend, exactly, it sounds yeah. like. And uh, so we're walking down the street, you know, drinking out of our solo cups, which obviously is a bad idea. Open containers, Jersey doesn't fly. Um, so Joey walks down the street, hits the bottom of my cup, smacks it in the air, looks me in the face and just yells, Pussy! And then I turned was preventing me. you from getting an open container <laughs> yeah, ticket. Yeah, always looking out for me. And uh, he turned around, ran in the other direction, and I was just like, fuck it. Like, we've, we've been babysitting Joey for long enough. Like, see what happens tonight. And uh, around 2 a.m., we get back to the hotel, and nobody knows where Joey is. And my friend was like, I was about to go to bed. I was like, same idea as Mike with the Thanksgiving thing. Just like, fucking yeah, let it ride. Just, yeah. Figure it out. He'll find you. We'll find him once the sun rises. Yeah. <laughs> He's starting to find people in the dark anyway. So <laughs> we call. So my friend was like, "Now before you go to bed, let's let's call the police station." And we we call him up and we're like, "Hey, my brother's missing." Uh, they're like, "What's his name?" I said, "Joey." And they go, "Oh yeah, little Joe." Got him here. <laughs> we went to the police station and. He just acted like the biggest inconvenience they've ever had. Like, they were so excited to get rid of him. They went to wake him up. He had <laughs> Did he, like, swat him yeah, away and tell him he needed a few more minutes? <laughs> no, I was praying. Yeah, I like, converted what? to Islam in myself. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to lie. I was watching this, uh, like, prison documentary the other day, and they were talking about how awful solitary is. And they're like, yeah, you go in there, and 
you don't speak to anyone for two weeks and there's nothing to I was like, I would just <laughs> fuck it. I would just sleep, also jerk off, and do yeah. push-ups. It would be great. <laughs> um, um, eventually, I was just like, look, I can't get in touch, but there's nothing we can do now. Uh, he's fine. He's either getting a cab or he's asleep. Just go away. They're like, you better find him by the morning. I was like, well, that's probably not going to happen. So I, was like, I, I, I just went. I, and eventually, I was just like, fuck it. I'm out. I went to sleep. I wake up the next day, and I was getting ready to drive home. I'm like, I better snag those leftovers out of the fridge. <laughs> Fuck it. I go in and gone. They didn't even leave like a couple extra like beers. I mean, they took everything that you could possibly. I'm pretty sure they took things that they weren't even. They would have had to take multiple that weren't even, yeah. up and down the yeah. stairs. They would have had, to, they would have had to request a luggage cart to take <laughs> all of the fucking leftovers just out of spite. I have to hand that Dicks. to them. That was a good. Because they know yelling at us doesn't do anything. <laughs> That's where we like, get it from. Yeah, but you have to pick something very spiteful that's really going to oh, spite. ruin our day. Spite is so where it's at. Yeah, all right. Uh, Friday after Thanksgiving with no leftovers. Fucking. Yeah. That's Jesus brutal. Christ. Dude, they. Although I will say this, and I love I love our family, I love the holidays together. Um, I personally think if you're doing holiday meals, you should cook in anticipation of leftovers, and that's not something we always do. I think we should like Uncle think Tommy. Uncle Uncle Tommy does, but I like I'm talking about like when it comes when it comes to things like stuffing and shit, like an extra like we never like I would I would make an actual. Like we do that you do the oven roasted bird and then I would go out and like either deep fry or grill a bird to specifically this from the guy who throw doesn't in cook for the family holidays. <laughs> I'm just saying, hey, One day. hey, you know One what? Day. A lot. Lots of left. <laughs> hey, Joe, Joe Buck never fucking played in the NFL, but you see, still see his ass on Fox every <laughs> Sunday, right? You can you can know what you're. What do they say? Who is Joe Buck blowing yeah, <laughs> <Pop> Aikman. <laughs> But you get you get what I mean. Like, I, know, I I agree. This, this year I actually because you don't cook the dude, deal. Dude, I literally made myself a second Thanksgiving this year. I I made I bought two packs of turkey legs. I made stuffing. I bought cranberries. Like I fucking the, the Saturday after Thanksgiving I did Thanksgiving part do. And why did you do that for the family? Yeah. <laughs> fucking because you this motherfucker stole leftovers from me <laughs> on Thanksgiving ago. Spikes. I fucking yeah. relished them. <laughs> Um, we gotta take, we have to take a quick commercial break, and I have to take a piss. We'll be, uh, we'll be back in a moment after a, a word from our sponsor. Don, we now are gay apparel indeed. Just in time for the holidays, North Pole Productions, a leader in all-male entertainment, is giving you the gift of a triple dose of dick to unwrap on XXXmas. Chris Mastry, Sander Klaus, and Jack Frost are on a mission to bring frankincense, myrrh, and big hard cock in O Come on the Faithful. Then, Santa isn't the only one going down in the throat-coating, instant classic, Smoking Chimneys. You won't be able to stop punishing your pine tree as Rudolph D. Rainier and Dasher St. Noel give Chris Kringle a creamy white Christmas. Later, when you're ready for another tug on the old candy cane, pop open a bottle of lube and pop on God Fist Ye Merry Gentlemen. It's the film that adult video news called the most poop shoot punishing piece of porn produced in all of 2016. Oh, come on the faithful, smoking chimneys, and God fist ye merry gentlemen. Available at NorthPoleProductions.com and in the iTunes store. Receive a free copy of It Came Upon a Midnight Queer when you download now. I hadn't heard that one yet. Yeah, no, I just <laughs> just did that one. Yeah. We're uh, yeah, we're back. Okay. <laughs> I, <think so>. <laughs> <laughs> I pre-ordered a few copies. Oh, uh, you should have. I'm I'm sorry because if you had waited, I could have told you that if you use the uh, the code Savage at checkout, you get fifteen percent off. <laughs> I don't even mind. Well, for everyone else who's in for uh, a hard cock holiday, uh, use the code Savage at checkout, and you get fifteen percent <laughs> off uh, all of those uh, fantastic features. Oh, so wow, happy. Nice. Happy stroking, kids. Um, but yeah, so I, I had to um, to produce that. I had to go on YouTube and search. You can actually there there is there is now a file on my computer, an MP3 
called Gay Sex That's Sounds. <laughs> it's a fucking... <laughs> that file existed long before you recorded that commercial. <laughs> it was like when you guys used to get on dad's computer in the basement when you were in like high school. He would, it would crash. He would bring it to his IT guy at work. And the guy would just be like, there's a lot of porn on this. <laughs> no, if you, have, if you have two teenage boys living in the house, you just have to assume that people are jerking off everywhere. <laughs> Um, but <laughs> yeah, it's the, dude, it's a, it's a nine minute, it's a nine minute track too. There's a, <laughs> I had to clip it off of the, the end cause it was just too long, but there's, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think it made it. And there's one part where the guy says like, slap your ball sack against my hole. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, the first time I heard that, I almost <laughs> shit my fucking pants laughed. Did you laughing. listen to the full nine minutes? Nah, I just went, I, I looked at how long the, um, the ad was going to be and I was just like. All right, I need what ninety seconds, so I just co- cut and copied, like you know, just like just over ninety you seconds. You just happened there. to land on. I just happened to <laughs> land on. So, so slap your ball sack against <laughs> my hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't isn't Christmas wonderful? <laughs> Magical. We've been we've been fucking up holidays for a long time. At our house. I think I'm trying to pinpoint when we started ruining Christmases, and I. I think right around Festivus, so I could be wrong. I th- no, I think even earlier, the first time was probably when I almost urinated on uh, uh, a yeah. stack yeah. of presents in Mom you, and Dad's You were room. running solo for a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It took a yeah, while it, to get yeah. to well, the fourth uh, It was, yeah, uh, yeah, it was yeah, a, a California yeah. start. <laughs> once we, yeah, once we all... Kind of yeah. Well, one, yeah, once we all hit our stride, it was yeah. great. But yeah, there was, <laughs> it was my, uh, my junior year of high school, and like my... You know, that's like kind of around the time you're... Your parents are fun, like just finally like fuck it. There's, we can't stop him from drinking, so we may as well just let him get hammered with the, the rest of us on at least on holidays. And I got fucking housed, like I was like the, the the shackles were off, no leash. I was like I am loaded for fucking bear week off of school. All I gotta worry about is fucking drinking and jerking it. Yes, <laughs> so I fucking. I got pretty. Dad's gonna need to take a trip to the IT guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that probably ca- caused one of many, one of many Napster-induced trips to fucking yes. to IT. Late <laughs> like December trip to IT. <laughs> um, our parents got very lazy when it came to Christmas. After a while, like they wouldn't even like put the, the shit out under the tree on on Christmas. Like it would just be like. They would, like, you'd wake up Christmas morning, you'd go down, we would get up before them, turn on Christmas music, plug in all the lights, and we'd go wake them up. Yeah. But I want to say by the time we were in, like, ninth or tenth grade, it was going down like this. And so, I'm like, I was wasted, but I was like, oh, I wonder if those assholes put the presents out yet. And instead of just looking under the tree to see if they were there, I, I also, I also had to take a piss. And again, to understand the layout of our old home. The my parents' room and the bathroom were kind of parallel to each other, and the presents would usually be stacked near this couch, which was lined up with where the toilet would be in our bathroom. So in my drunken haze of wanting to look at presents and also wanting to take a piss, I somehow stumbled into my parents' room and was literally a split second away from pissing all over the wrapped Christmas presents, like if it was like a, if it was like a, a, a slapstick comedy, they would have done the loud sound of the zipper going down, like the, <laughs> and then all of a sudden I hear I hear my mom go, Mike, <laughs> like, I'm trying to take a piss. What? And she's like, the presents. What do you mean the presents? You're gonna pay all the presents. Get out. I was like, oh, and she like escorted me to the bathroom so I could go to the bed. Ba- I fuck. I fucked that up before. Like there were times when I stumbled into our bathroom and I accidentally, I accidentally pissed in the hamper. <laughs> <laughs> like I, we just had a bad urinary yeah, layout. Yeah, I, I don't think the layout was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say the layout was not the. Issue. Mike's like looking at the footprints of our couch. It's like something's not right. <laughs> <laughs> the couch and the toilet were aligned. Whoever the fuck. The couch was ten feet past. The I need to. My mom and dad keep the Christmas presents <laughs> in the bathtub. <laughs> I need to. I need to speak with the contractor and the decor. You had to go down. Like two stairs to get to the bedroom. Well, no, I've been on my way up, oh, so I was like. Literally, all you had to do to get from your bedroom to the bathroom was walk in a two foot straight line. I think I want to say what happened was 
I was walking up the stairs to see if they had the, the presents in their room, and then I had to piss, but I was I had already committed to the room, and but like in that drunken yeah. what the fuck am I up to fog, I just went straight for the the present corner mm. and just I was I was a second away from unleashing. There was another fucking time I, I went into I had to go into their fucking room on Christmas. Uh, our cousin Ben and I, I think Ben had just graduated boot camp, and like we got drunk and Mom took the took our alcohol away and put it in their room. So we had to f- wait until they were asleep, nudge the door open, and like crawl crawl along this wood floor. <laughs> they had left it just sitting on their dresser, grab, grab the booze, and then crawl out. <laughs> so we could keep, like, they, they were big on taking things away. They severely yeah. underestimated the lengths at which we would go to get things that they tried to Remember when they us. hid the bomb? Yes. 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 And yes. mom accused you of getting high and losing it? Yeah, she was like, maybe you got high and lost it. I was like, when I get high, I just sit on the couch. Like, I don't go... She, like, she thinks when people get, like, high, like, they yeah. start, like, marching around yeah. the house, like, yeah. hiding yeah. things. Yeah. Like, I love that, like, mom, like, has, like, an eighth grade dare class, like, <laughs> understanding of what drugs do to yeah, you. I was like, I'm really glued to the couch. There's no way I fucking hid this. Yeah, then Joey found it in like three seconds. And we were actually talking to dad last weekend about when we used to steal mom's debit card and go to the diner. Oh, fuck yeah. Today. That's fucking great. But like, we would yeah, send the Joey set. in <laughs> to their bedroom at like midnight and it would be like dark and he would just crawl on the floor and like dig in mom's purse <laughs> and take the I debit card. I crawl around that thing blind <laughs> yeah. oh, in the yeah. middle of the night and I'd, I'd be able to find that. I was, bi- I, I was big on Jack and their gas card. That Exxon yeah, card. Yeah, we talked about that too. Yeah. They had the Exxon card. Joey used to take it back to college with him, so we'd have it with him for like three months at a time. <laughs> I used to, all right, this is what I used to do, was sneaky as fuck, because mom would, they had like two, and mom would give me one to take to school. So I would, if I like needed like beer money or some shit like that, I would talk to whoever was buying beer, and I, I would be like, yo, I will, I'll fill up, you know, I got this, I got a gas <laughs> card, I'll fill up your, I'll fill up your fucking tank, and just whatever it comes out to, over the course of our next beer buyings, cover me, and we're good. So I don't know that I don't know if that's like a slush fund or if I was laundering the money, yeah. but there was yeah. something awesome was going on there. I'm very proud of that scheme. That actually, yeah. that is, that you is didn't have to pay a dime. Yeah, you got. I paid nothing. You got a free ride. Yeah, and booze. It's like whatever Unicef Depending is Depending on the price of gas, that was either a yeah. good deal. No, well, for me, it was yeah. nothing, yeah. yeah. I was like oh, yeah. Trump. Oh, yeah, right. I was like yeah, Trump. Yeah, but doesn't pay for anything. I, was, I just price, made a great man. deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah, made a great deal. I, let me tell you, we are going to make the best deals <laughs> I ever. wish you would... St- yeah, when right. Mary Montone gave gave her son that Exxon card, one of the worst <laughs> deals <laughs> ever made. <laughs> well, I think the deal when she gave it to you was to fill it up once. Yeah. Yeah. She thought she was she thought she was making this great deal. It was a terrible deal. He's out using that ex that Exxon card. And let me tell you something, people. I've had an Exxon card before. I know how people use these X card, Exxon cards. He's getting free booze. It was a terrible deal. She made the worst deal ever. Uh, fucking. <laughs> but I think yeah, the um, pissing on the presents was when we started um, definitely ruining Christmas. Could have used that uh, that. D- dusted off that old midnight pee alarm from the back of the <laughs> for, yeah, for those who don't know uh, <laughs> the the other male voice on this show right now urinated in his bed so so frequently and at such a late age that he had to be rigged up with with an alarm at night mm-hmm. when going to sleep age is just a number <laughs> <laughs> that would go off in the event that he started pissing himself but he happens to be an incredible incredibly deep sleeper so <laughs> the only person who did not wake up from the alarm was the person who was soaked to. in piss <laughs> and you just like hear dad when we go off god and just be like, damn it oh. and, just, like, get up, and then just have to go pick joey up like, it was just literally like an alarm to let everyone know <laughs> that it was just taking a piss it was like, like there was a fucking it, it was like there was a 95 year old man sleeping on the bunk <laughs> below me and a nurse was coming in at night to fucking change out his bed Pander's colostomy pack. <laughs> that was probably the first Christmas ruining. I would say we had a little bit of a gap there for a couple years because you guys were were still young in high school. I guess I got yeah. got through college. By my senior year of college is when we really kicked off the holiday ruining shenanigans. Which made sense. You were senior year of college. We're senior year of high school. That's yes. so we were both in just prime not give a fuck mode. Yeah. 
And to make things better, Ben had just graduated boot camp. It was, and he got hooked up with some uh, a, a thirty day leave uh, block because he was doing recruiting duty over the holidays. So he was just chilling for a couple weeks by us. And probably what goes down in Montone lore, I would say this. This is up there with the strippers, which we'll get to next, as our our most popular holiday story oh, ever. For sure. So, if you're a Seinfeld fan, then you know what Festivus is, obviously. And, and if you were, uh, if you if you went to high school, you know what losers. Are. <laughs> I was literally about to follow up with like, yeah, and if yeah. you've ever been to high school, you know what a fucking loser is. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was saving for last night. I was like reminded myself. I was like, remember to call them losers when the story comes up. Like that's important. <laughs> so fucking. So imagine. All right. Imagine a bunch of eighteen-year-old or seventeen-year-old virgins. Uh, who are just learning how to drink. <laughs> and Some of them probably still 30 years old. Probably virgins. still virgins, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's just, just starting to drink, and our parents go out to dinner for two hours, and they want to have a party for Festivus. We which, thought they would do drinks after dinner. Yeah, so sorry. So, one extra hour. Yeah, realistically speaking, it was the holidays. You figure they'd go out for two hours for dinner. They're going to do some after-dinner drinks. And by that time, you know, you're, you're looking at midnight and people are going to start leaving anyway, so you say, fuck it. And jo- Joey was under no suspicion. He'd be under suspicion of things like vandalism or, you know, throwing a cup of soup at someone out of the window of a car. Things like that that he actually did, but he, had, he hadn't been caught drinking yet. So they, there was... They had kept a very close eye on me. Well, you, but you were a I was just... But, I just got caught. Yeah. yeah. Well, you were the, more all around. You yeah. were, well, your girlfriend your, uh, in high school told on me. Didn't do it on purpose, but they had, like, such a close eye on me. And I remember, like, I didn't want to rat Joey out in high school. Like, he wasn't really doing anything. But I was like... He was up to, like, weird shit on the side. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, they're not paying attention to him, and I know they wouldn't be happy with what he's doing. It was like Bin Laden. Like, he was secretly, <laughs> secretly engaged in a lot of nefarious shit, but yeah. they didn't know about it until the culminating event, you know? Yeah. So 9-11 and yeah. for the Montones Festivus. That's actually, that's, that's actually a great yeah. that really, that is, that And he's tall and skinny like Bin Laden, yeah. too. Yeah. There was lots of facial lots. hair. <laughs> <laughs> so many similarities. So, <laughs> Joey's like, all right, look, can you get me, um, can you get me some booze? I want to have the guys over. We're going to have Festivus. Like, we're just going to, we're going to get drunk. We're, we're going to wear formal wear. And we're going to roast each other. And we're going to have a wrestling match. I'm like, all right. Sounds, I was, <laughs> it was, sounds kind of gay, <laughs> but yeah, I was I like, booze, so I was like, up. I was like, but you know what? I was, I was excited that my, my brother was finally drinking. Cause I was like, oh, maybe he's, maybe he's going to become an actual human being now. Uh, like two years earlier, I had gotten drunk off about eight Coronas. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Well that was, and then was, I th- was that the same night that, uh, the hurt, uh, that the, the Nicole's fight. dad, uh, threatened to cut my balls off. For, for uh, <laughs> different. Oh no, no, no. Nicole's in there that time. This yeah. may have been the time you made Katie the mixed drinks of like every alcohol. Alcohol that was oh, like, she, uh, for like a 95 she, pound girl. Well, I didn't. Joey did. Yeah, the night of, uh, there was a brawl at the end of the street. No, that was my birthday when. Sorry, no, of, that was a year. Of a anyway, a lot of things. Yeah, we brought a lot of. Sh- a lot of sh- this is not the only time this year. <laughs> yeah, we brought a lot of shame upon the holiday. Upon the, the old, family. All days of the year. <laughs> the family name. In any case, he's fuck. He, I'm just like, all right, I'll get you guys. I'll get you guys a case of beer and a bottle of Jack. Inaccurate. I asked for a case. I asked for a couple cases of beer, and you said, "Mom and Dad, if they come home, will smell beer. They won't smell hard alcohol." So you only bought us hard alcohol. <laughs> no, no, there were. I, no, we I, stole I, Dad's beers. Those oh, the beers okay. You're thinking of? We stole Dad's beers. When oh, we yeah, that's hard right. Hard alcohol that you bought. That's right. All right. You just, you just supplied us with a few bottles of Jack Daniels and maybe a bottle of vodka. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. A bunch of kids, for the record, who had never drank before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so as a, t- a twenty year, a twenty one year old man, fucking <laughs> supplying supplying minors with uh, with hard liquor for their first drinking experience. What can go wrong? So I come down, I come down, and none of them can stand or speak. And my like, paper- well, that's that's not how you got back into this. this oh, what yeah. happened was I was home because I wasn't feeling well. So my friend and her boyfriend at the time came over and. Mike, before you guys went out for the night, said, you got to see what's going down down there. <laughs> he was like, just a bunch of, like, you, he's like, you think it sounds fun? Because, like, you could hear them screaming. He's like, you go in the basement, <laughs> it's just a bunch of guys running around the pool table <laughs> yelling. In a very cramped basement. <laughs> so I was like, guys. so... 
So then you and and our cousin and some of your friends headed off to a strip club, and you said, I'll be back later. <laughs> and then, like, 20 minutes later, I go downstairs, and, like, three of them are, like, unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> They're, like, sweating. Someone's in the bathroom throwing up. And I was just like, fuck, no one's going to listen to me because they're all in the same grade. Like, we're twins. So I was like, I got to call Mike. So I called Mike. I'm like, I hate to do this to you, but I need you to come home and take care of this. And he goes, all right, just do me a favor and make sure Joey doesn't fall asleep. So I was like, all right, this should be easy. (laughs) And uh, I go downstairs. Someone's in this, like, weird closet that we had under the stairs. Oh, the crawl space. Yeah, pulling out a, like, dusty old bottle of, uh, like, Sambuca or Oh, something. my God. Yeah, we had all those, like, yeah. you know when people give you, like, a shitty bottle of liquor as a gift? You're like, oh, thanks. And you just, just stick it somewhere. We had just drank our first any <laughs> bottle of liquor. So that didn't look to us like a shitty bottle of liquor. It just looked like a bottle of liquor. Yeah, so there's just, like, been these guys are just, like, drooling down their face and still. They were drinking ouzo and shit. Yeah. They were drinking. And <laughs> so I, I if, like, if there was a bottle of cum mixed with motor oil, they would have been like, "Oh, creme de menthe, fantastic." <laughs> so I, so I like stop. I take the bottle of sambu. I'm like, "This is weird. Let's stop this." And then uh, Joey, I like look at him, and he's like lying on the ground with his eyes like half open. And I was like, "Hey, my, all Mike told me to do was keep Joey awake." So I look at Joey and I say, "Joey, open your eyes." And ever since then, yeah. these losers. There's two of them who were sober, mind you, through this entire event. That actually makes you, a, if you're sober through an event like that, it makes you a bigger loser than the people <laughs> who are wasted Which is what I remind them to every time they make fun of me, of yelling at Joey. They make fun Faggots. of me saying, keep your eyes open. And I make them Faggots. sit down and listen to me for 10 minutes, tell them what big <laughs> losers they were. That throughout this entire event, they were the sober ones. But uh, yeah, it was just like these kids who had never drank before, covered in their own vomit. Uh... And, and then what happened was Mike and his friends came home and you guys were able to clear everyone out because they were actually afraid of you. Oh, we, we were fucking tossing bodies. <laughs> we were, I had D- uh, Dave who, um, who, you know, pops into the show on, once in a while as a co-host is fucking enormous. I think around the time he was probably about, about 240 and was warming up with three plates on each side when he benched. So him clearing a bunch of like seventeen year old twinks out of a hilarious. basement was a lot of fun. T- it was like watching like a a jacked Nebraska farm boy toss b- b- bales <laughs> of hay into a fucking silo. You're probably lighter than bales. <laughs> <of hay. laughs> yeah. And then um, Cher dog goes Cher dog. goes. I think he was. Called- he he, he was he, him and him and Ben bumped heads walking up and down the stairs, and Sherry looked at him and said, "Who the hell are you?" And Ben replied famously. I'm the guy who's gonna kick your ass if you get out of our house. <laughs> <all this> house. <laughs> There's only two of them left. It's Joey and and Auric, because Auric was tending to Jimmy. Oh, that's oh, right. So to, as Joey, as Joe, or as uh, Dave refers to, it sounded like he was trying to fuck him in the bathroom. <laughs> There's three losers left well, we, for everyone out there. And we just them. placed you guys on chairs in the kitchen. <laughs> not around the table, not anything. Like, literally just on chairs in the middle of the kitchen. And we're just like, yeah, that'll, that'll, <laughs> that'll do. do. Oh, this is fed. This is The best part about this, This is we're not even at Christmas yet. This is December 23rd. Yeah. This fucking weekend. And we have, we have two more days of ruining the holiday <laughs> to go. Yeah, we're just starting at this point. Um, so... We almost had, we were almost there. We almost had everything cleaned up and perfect. We did, before we get to the uh, the end of the story, we did a great job. I really want to commend us for, we cleaned up, we got a lot of things looking fairly normal. Uh, but you know what, sometimes you just, uh, you don't have enough time. You, it happens, and Joey, Joey's taking a piss, but he wasn't even awake for this anyway, yeah, so Jackie, really I feel like this is one of your favorite moments, it so It really go was, for it. it's, it's <laughs> to this day. Uh, so... My friend's boyfriend, Adam, he's in the garage throwing away some beer cans, and I don't even think mom and dad had ever met him before, and they walk in the garage, and he <laughs> was just, like, made eye contact with, like, dad or something, which is like, hmm, like, comes inside, walks to the basement to me, and he goes, Jackie, I think your dad's home. So I was like, I looked at him, said pretty much what I just said to you guys, and it was like, all right, we, we did a good job. <laughs> we we did. did our best, and that's all we can say right now. And uh, all of a sudden, I just hear mom, I hear her heels coming to the kitchen, and I hear... Oh my god, Joey! And she wasn't just caught in sight of Joey. With his head 
constantly slammed it against the kitchen counter and covered a black cake. Oh, they also used to dress up for this event. I feel like we left that out. Do, they, do you guys still dress up though? Yeah. yeah. And it's uh, gotten more lax today. He though. was wearing a black dress shirt that was just covered in vomit. And she, this was her first glimpse of finding out that her son drinks. It was a degenerate. Yeah. And uh, then she said. I was more of a, I was still a, a huge loser at this point. Still <laughs> yeah. am. But. Yeah, no. No one's, no one's questioning that. Um, so then dad came and saw him. And dad, in typical fashion, like. Did you take a picture? Did not want to be bothered? Yeah, took out his phone, took a picture of the jelly, <laughs> and then just goes, all right, throw him in the shower. And they throw him. Great. They throw him in, like, the. Downstairs shower stand and just stand shower. shower. It was like fully clothed. Yeah, it, was like just, when, it was like when it was like when Southern cops like, come uh, across like a <laughs> like a, a, a drunk and they're like, "What what should we do with him?" Eh, eh, just rinse him off and throw him in the drunk tank. Like they just it was just like me, Schlett, and Dad like carrying Joey like, like three people like, just tossing him into the stand up shower, yeah. just rinsing him off fully clothed yeah, and then yeah, sitting him up. What are those like removable hoses that they? Just <laughs> Hose them down. Like, you know in uh, Super Troopers when they cover Farfight in powder? <laughs> it was like that. That was sort of their... I mean, that you had gotten uh, caught throwing the soup earlier that year at a, bu- had, a bicyclist. I, actually, actually I had... sounds like um, an innocent thing, but not so yeah, Throwing bad. soup at a bicyclist doesn't sound <laughs> innocent. Not that bad. Are those Christmas cookies? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I'll definitely take one. Cookies? Are they fresh out of the oven? Kim, can you serve me one so I can slap your ass when you do it? <laughs> but it says cookies for Santa. Santa. <laughs> oh, that's We're going great. to Santa Con. Are you, are you Santa? <laughs> Mike, Joey has a Santa uh, Kim has to come over here and do it so I can slap her ass cheeks. This is what a, this is what a mad men, man does when he fucking Jeez. gets cookie. It's the weird thing a man does around his city. When he gets cookie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want the cookie. All right, be gone, cookie wench. <laughs> be gone. These are fantastic, though, ladies. Great job. Yeah, these are great. Oh, house? Yes. Mm. Nestle. Nestle. They're so buttery. If you're listening right now, you can't have a cookie, but they're so good. <laughs> oh, oh it's fuck. Like, it's that family guy line? He's like, so good. Mm. 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 You know what I'm talking about, chocolate? Mm. Oh, I love chocolate. I, I love chocolate. It's so mm. bad. It's so bad. It's so good. So, was that the same Christmas that, um... Well, first of all, we were... I want to get sidetracked, but quickly, I want to know two important things that... This year is the 10 year anniversary of that Festivus. Oh shit! Yeah, that's huge. Mm-hmm. Happy anniversary! Yeah, happy anniversary! Woo! Honestly, something we haven't talked about yet is that uh, Mike and I are pretty surprised you've made it this far. Yeah, we're, we we're thought you we were going to be dead by now. Yeah, okay. we used to talk about this. We really didn't think you were going to make it past like 25. You were in the majority. Like the upper, that Upper East Side gay sex murder that uh, I've been talking about? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm shocked that hasn't happened to you. Yeah. Hey, my time will. <laughs> I want to do like just like a weekly update on that. That is the most fascinating case ever. These the case. three guys that they have arrested in that have the best hair and the best fashion sense in the world. I love good hair. Um, they're gonna if they do if they do time, they're gonna have the best gay prison sex. Prisoners like gay prisoners enjoy the sex out there. I guess you're gonna if, ask that. That's the thing. If you're no gay, romance. if you're gay and you like drugs and you go to jail. That must be the best fucking thing though. Free room and board, uh, free meals. Free room and board. Uh, yeah, I, there's yeah. Just, I just like I did it. Literally, <laughs> and, and literally <laughs> the, the yeah. easiest. All right, the, the easiest I way to get dr- to get drugs oh, in ju- in in prison <laughs> is is to like suck cock. So literally, it's just it's a fucking vacation. Prison is a vacation if you're gay. Anyway. Solitary would be a nightmare. No, <laughs> yeah. all those guys. Oh my god! Oh shit! Maybe that's Holy why people shit. don't like solitary. Maybe that's why. That's yeah. why they, they 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 think they think of it as cruel and unusual. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's get cock blocking. It's they say that they're throwing you in the hole, but really nothing's going into any hole. They're all excited when they hear that. They're like, going to the hole. no, I'm going to the hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that was. I think that was also that festivus was the. The Christmas of the stolen street sign, too. It was. It was when we stole um, from the taxpayers. Yeah, because Ben, because Ben was there. Because I actually oh, remember yeah, on Festivus, I woke up like around like three a.m. on the couch and uh, woke up to take a piss in the same bathroom where I had uh, a few hours earlier been hosed down. <laughs> Not that I remembered that because I was blacked out, but uh, I remember hearing Mike, you, and Ben watching TV downstairs. So I yelled down. Did mom and dad come home and find me, me and my friends last night and thinking that it was just a dream that I had had? And you just yell back, 
yeah. <laughs> and so I was, I, was like, like, I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and then uh, and three hours later, I was back on the couch, and I woke up, and I heard Uncle Stan ask Dad what type of punishment he was going to lay down, and Dad said that my hangover would be punishment enough. Uh-huh. So kudos to Dad. That was, you just that always was a get off, punishment. Yeah. Joey always got off so easy yeah. with that. Especially a month after getting in trouble throwing soup at a man. That yeah. Like, uh, I got a, a pretty good third chance. I think what was going on was that Dad didn't really care. Like, And I think that <laughs> ended up being a theme throughout the rest of like and high school and we college. we hadn't known it at the time. Yeah, like he wanted to reprimand us and like he wa- he was like, I know I'm supposed to, but it always just felt like <laughs> an inconvenience. Yeah, but this is going to take some sort <laughs> yeah. of effort on I my think, part. <laughs> I think that'll really ring true when we get to the stripper story because uh, he just didn't want to have to yell at us and he got dealt such a bad hand in children. Oh, he got dealt was, the like, worst hand. Not to a bad hand, just an inconvenient an hand. Inconvenient. I think it was a good hand. No, he yeah. influenced that yeah. hand though he, he played a role he, yeah, yeah he he dealt those cards but <laughs> throwing like, shit like, at, a, at an ice cream parlor's fucking <laughs> like vent so that it sprays around <laughs> inside yeah you just started but what i like what i was saying to joey is like dad never i feel like he never really wanted to yell at or punish us those were mostly but, mom driven yeah that's what i mean like she would drive it and then he was just like i have to do Ugh, something yeah because he was he was gonna get denied sex if he didn't oh. uh, we realize now joey oh. I, i'm gonna brush over that because it's disgusting but Joey's punishment for Festivus was his hangover. Yeah, and oh, I, yeah, I, I think I picked you up uh, McDonald's. Joey had, like, a yeah. good punishment. You're 18, your hangover probably lasted, like, three hours. Yeah, you were probably you fine by that night, yeah. And I it was Christmas. No, no, I struggled because you, you had me wear that T-shirt that said, like, I did what last night? <laughs> oh, yeah, the yeah, I remember struggling yeah. during the day, but then I was actually, I think I was allowed to drink, like, a, a couple of beers. <laughs> I was allowed to so, Like, he's already been broken in. Yeah. Fuck it. Well, the best part about getting in trouble around the holidays, especially Christmas, because it was, like, two days, and then you had, like, New Year's, is that everyone was in a festive mood. Yeah, so, so every, every terrible thing we did was looked yeah. at with a, a sense of revelry and yeah. fucking childlike wonder. <laughs> uh, I think I still believe in Santa Claus. <laughs> and you're still wearing that pee alarm, too. <laughs> <laughs> Probably went off a lot last night. <laughs> <laughs> fucking ringing all night. <laughs> uh, then that Christmas Eve would have been when uh, Ben and I went to... We, I, that, was prob- that probably marks... The first, the very first Fort Apache Christmas Eve. Yeah. Ben, Ben and I, uh, we walked home, and we had we we were walking. We used to use that cut through at the old guy's house. Ah, the old guy, yeah. The old guy cut through. I got caught more than once using that. I've been caught using the old guy. They do not like it. They don't like it, and uh, I, I actually remember I, would, I bumped into Mrs. Coglin a couple times. Did days. you really? Oh, yeah, she'd be walking first. Was she cool with it? She didn't really mind. She didn't oh, 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 just kind of confused why I was walking out of this old guy's backyard. That is, I'm looking at a, a stack of pancakes. Mm-hmm. Those are waffles. waffles. They're waffles, yeah. They, they are haven't fallen yet. That, that is leaning at a precarious angle. Right. I think got, they're good. I think we got about 10 waffles. I think they're good. <laughs> nice. My cousin had just graduated uh, boot camp, and I was home from college, so like, the ni- literally the night after um, Joey got fucking black shit out for Festivus, we go to uh, our dive bar, Fort Apache, and we're, we're walking home, and we find another street sign on the ground. What, are you fucking around your phone? Uh, still? It's Snapchat, it's 26. <laughs> Joey's still a loser. Such a faggot. Um, <laughs> so safe space. Fucking... This beanbag is my safe space. You can't make fun of me when I'm sitting on it. <laughs> we made we made our way home with. We found a street sign. There. We were gonna make our way home. He found a UPS boxes on someone's porch. I was like, put those back. We can steal something he else. Found UPS. He was. He ran down. He's like, I got you a present. I was like, oh, <laughs> we totally can't take those. I was like, I, I appreciate. I appreciate the sentiment. It was nice of you to think of me around the holidays. But those belong to someone else. So far. they belong to a young child. <laughs> they were. A, I would have. Yeah. Even if, the Montones draw a line. Yeah. So. Uh, you can't fuck with. I've watched enough Home Alone to know that you don't fuck with a kid at Christmas. Anyway, so we find there's a street sign down. Like I, don't, I guess I don't know if a drunk knocked it over or if it just rusted in half. So we like we're like fuck it. We pick it up and we did like a Marine Corps style log run back to the house with, with it over our shoulders and we were singing Running Cadence the entire time. Of, Live run live, live run live. We still pull. Live run live. We finally get it back and just throw it in the backyard. And we're like, Joe, oh, Joey's passed out in the living room. 
Let's haze him. So we we jumped on him and started started punching him in the face that and hurt. thighs. Yeah, that really hurt. <laughs> and my mom comes down and my, being very upset. <laughs> my mom comes down and she's like he, uh, and my cousin's like, Aunt Mary, I'm really sorry about the sign in your backyard. And my mom looks out the window and it's like, it's fucking dark out. She can't see a fucking sign. <laughs> She's like, Ben, what the hell are you talking about? She thought he was drunk. We wake up the, the next morning <laughs> to a livid. Do you guys remember like how pissed off he was about that? Dad? Dad? Yeah. Yeah. Furious. Absolutely. Furious. Yeah. We stole from the, or you stole from the <laughs> municipality, right? He's, he thought like, yeah. he thought the cops were going to be going house to house yeah. looking for, he's like, if it was a major intersection. A, if the it was a very minor intersection. <laughs> it was the, probably one of the most minor intersections. Nothing in town. happened in Glen Rock, so I wouldn't be surprised if the cops were just bored and like, yeah, let's figure this one. Going door to door looking for a, a stolen street. Like he thought, no, he said if if the cops show up here and they find it, they're gonna blame me. I was like. Okay. I don't think they're gonna blame the middle aged man. Just had got away with that one. He's like, you shouldn't have stolen that sign. He's like, you gotta get rid of it. I was like, well, we could just dump it in the woods. He's like, no, you're not dumping it in the woods. You're getting, you're taking it back now. You stole. This belongs to the taxpayers. You stole from the municipality. Which at, at 22, yeah, it's, I, I'm 31, and I still think that that's fucking bull. Taxes are bullshit anyway. Fuck you. You don't want to. We shouldn't be paying for fucking streets. We can, we can find a free market solution to street signs. <laughs> Join the Libertarian Party. So we took it. It was broad daylight. Like, after we opened, we're like, we're gonna, all right, we'll take care of it after we open presents. We hid it. We had to hide it in the garage because he was afraid that one of the neighbors would see. So we hide it. In their, kids were, their kids were up to the same type of shit. Um, I think he was more worried about, like, one of the backyard neighbors who, like, didn't know who yeah, we were. Know us. Oh, oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, so we hide it. And that was when... I think Mom, was she driving like a Rav Four or a Highlander no, or something? Highlander. Yeah, that's the best car. Yeah. So we we just I'm not eating. I'm gonna keep casting. Um, <laughs> so we stick it. We stuck it in the back. We stuck it in the back of the the Highlander, and we're cruising down cruising down the road. Dad drove behind us just so that no cop would be able to pull up behind us and see. <laughs> ben and I, we it's, the place was again right around the corner where we went to drop it. We literally go park on a side street, just dumped this sign on someone's lawn, and drove away. Like, it was like, like the mob throwing a body in the swamp. Like, it was the same thing that you described you know, <laughs> earlier. We just did, just get <laughs> rid of this ago. thing. Fucking, I, you know what's great? I, I really hope the statute of limitations is up on some of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting if, you if it's not, if it's not, yeah, if, uh, there's a, definitely enough people out there that don't like us. There's a long list of to, people that don't uh, to like pursue this. particularly me that yeah, yeah would definitely pursue this. So in in case anyone is listening, um, if you need to find me, I play rugby for the Bayonne Bombers. <laughs> My name is uh, Thomas Arthur Hursthouse, <laughs> and that's how you can track me down. Uh, anyway, that's another story. You have to keep listening to the podcast. Another episode, we'll talk about that. We stole a trophy from a rugby team because they're a bunch of faggots. Anyway, I feel like we set the bar very high with that that Christmas. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. And then we followed it up with another... I um, still, for the record, remember being woken up in the middle of the night and getting ugh. beaten up by you guys. <laughs> Fuck and then, you! And then think, laying there after getting beaten up, thinking to myself, Ben's only like a year older than me. <laughs> and he's a fucking man. <laughs> he was a fucking dude. He just pummeled your ass. He always seemed ass. like wildly disappointed in you. <laughs> <laughs> was this the Christmas that uh, Cassandra was blaming the Jews for everything? It may have been. <laughs> that was Which, very awkward. They're, they're a very culpable people, let's be honest. <laughs> uh, but, uh... And she did not know present company included. I feel like, Jackie, this is one of your favorite ones. Do you want to run? You want to take the ball and run on this one? Sure. So, well, we were, it was an uh, Elfrain Christmas party. So our, our neighbors have uh, an annual Christmas party. Everyone goes over. It's back this year. I'm fucking pumped. I know, me too. And uh, at some point, probably around the same year, we, uh, we all got, all of our other neighbors are equally as uh, big degenerates as us, I would say. They don't get away with it as much in their house, so they couldn't, they couldn't do as much. But um, we had gotten kicked out of the Christmas party and then gone to our our house across the street. Well, I think you have to elaborate on what happened to get because that was when the I don't remember why we got kicked out. Well, that was when the blame the Jews incident. Right. 
No, she said that when we came back. We came back to this party, no? I'm she said it in front of a bunch of Jews. Yeah, well, <laughs> wait, I, I'm not... Oh, remember. when we came back, okay. Yeah, we came back. Yeah. We, we got kicked out of right, our right. house. I started stand, drinking. I stand corrected. And then we got kicked out of our house. <laughs> so we figured, I think that's a party. Okay, let's go back to the party. Not that they can get out. <laughs> so let's go back. And we went back. And then I actually don't remember exactly what... I think Mrs. Alfred started maybe yelling at me again at some point. Someone started yelling at me. And uh, then at this point, Cassandra, our cousin's wife, started saying something about just blame the Jews <laughs> while we were standing next to our Jewish neighbor. And Mike and I just looked at each other. And we were like, so, all right. It'd be a good time to, <laughs> good time to go <laughs> check, out the, check out the buffet. Who is this lady? I, be- I, I, I believe my beverage needs some freshening. <laughs> just walked away slowly <laughs> from the anti-Semites that we brought to the Christmas party. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, I felt I felt like I had just brought Eichmann to a bar mitzvah. Fucking <laughs> yeah, it was a Christmas. Yeah, I mean that's that's true. They they are fair we, game. We should have warned her. Oh. But at that time we just disassisted. I think that was the because that was when I think that was right after I got back from Iraq. I think that was the um the Connor Dane Christmas and the the Christmas of the flying champagne. Flying champagne. Which I Favorite also, moment. I feel like these are also Jackie favorites, so Jackie, if you want them, all yours to fucking... I can describe the champagne. I feel like the Connor Dane moment is, is, Joey. A, is uh, Joey. Oh, you guys take it. Yeah, take cool again. <laughs> Let him go. Ja- Jackie, hold his mic. All right, I, I got you. Eating a waffle. On our way, so we came, we're coming back from Fort Apache, right? And then Joey will fill in the blanks on our walk home. But, uh, so we get home and we had, I don't even know why we had Chinese food. We were definitely eating Chinese food. Um... So Mike and I were like hanging out in the kitchen eating Chinese food. And oh, like, you know, because usually, um, like oh, the night, like lunch. one of the nights before Christmas or for lunch or some shit, we'll get some Eve takeout. Lunch, yeah. That's what we did. We used to, we ordered food on Christmas Eve while we watched yeah. a bunch of uh, Christmas. Yeah. So we had leftover lunch. So Mike and I were standing in the kitchen eating our Chinese food when my mom came down to once again yell at us that we had lost Joey, which <laughs> obviously Accurate. is a theme in our <laughs> nights out. So. Um, she was yelling at us, to which we didn't respond because at this point, I think we had been become pretty numb to getting yelled at by mom and dad. Yeah, I mean, it had been going on for me for uh, two decades, and you were getting two and a half actually by that point. So you you were up around two decades. So yeah, yeah. Once, it's like it's. Yeah, it, it's like. Eh, I think it's uh, it's a lot like racism or sexism. <laughs> if you hear enough of it, you just ignore it and, and let it go. Yeah, exactly. So yes, that's how we uh, view my mom yelling at us. Um, similar struggle, I feel. <laughs> I've, I've been fighting it my entire life. <laughs> uh, maybe not as big of a crowd. There's only three of us, but equally important. I think that makes us an even bigger minority. It does. Um, so anyway. Marginalized so, persons. So they have, since we didn't react to them yelling at us, I feel like they would go to extreme measures to Kimmy, try and reprimand us. Which, like, the Thanksgiving leftovers, they took those away from us. Thanks for making breakfast, so, ladies, by the way. on this particular night, what my mom decided to do was find the alcohol that we had bought in preparation for the next morning. <coughs> oh, yeah. For mimosas. Yeah, we're big on mimosas on Christmas Day to um, get out of it, because we're usually so fucking horribly hungover. Yeah, so she decided... Just keep drinking and smoking. Let's let's ruin breakfast on Christmas <laughs> for, for my children. The appropriate punishment yeah. for this is to because, ruin breakfast because they lost Joey again. <laughs> because they because they lost someone who was impossible. By the way, they they fucking lost Joey on the beach. That's true. We He's didn't ruin their loose. breakfast the next day. <laughs> so so she goes into the at our basement fridge and pulls out a bottle of champagne and. Um, I want to point out at this this point that when I was in the liquor store that morning deciding how many bottles of champagne to buy, I was between one and two because it was just for the three of us, and I wasn't even thinking, oh, we're going to want to drink two bottles, which I'm sure we would have, but I was just like, I feel like maybe something will happen to one. You and planned, I, planned I, redundancy I didn't is know, what they call that. Yeah, and I didn't know what would happen, but I just figured, let's be safe. It's so always grabbed, a good idea to plan for redundancy, yep, yes. Yeah, I'm a good planner. So I grabbed two bottles. And so my mom, now back to nighttime, my mom goes to the basement, grabs a bottle of champagne, walks upstairs, continues to yell at us about Joey. So I don't know what she said. Um, and so you, with mom, you never knew. It was just, it was you. She's like, no, no. She would find one thing to yell and yell it over and over again. You're goddamn disrespectful. Disrespectful. <laughs> She was right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, she wasn't um, wrong. So I gra- oh, yeah. so she grabs a bottle of champagne, and we're not telling her where Joey is because we don't know where Joey is. We were, so we weren't right. We weren't yeah. lying. No. 
So she walked out the back. Is that the Christmas you tried to enter someone's home? Yes. Nice. I think believe so. You and yes. Smith. Oh, right. but then we'll get There's to that's a different one. That yeah. We'll get to the we'll walk to in a, in yeah, a second. Yeah, we, we skipped over the walk while. You... So um, she takes a bottle of champagne, looks at us, and since we're giving her no information, takes the bottle, launches it out our back door, and hits some like milk carton thing. You know that like metal thing that would hold like flowers that says milk on it. Yeah. She threw it at that, and it just shattered all over the Fucking backyard. Fucking amazing. And in any other home, that would have been like a Thanks, traumatic. Dude night and you would have woken up the next day and been like well i guess christmas is ruined but yeah i feel like we just woke up and i was just like there. yeah it was, yeah we uh yeah, yeah i think you brought it up like yeah, yeah. very victoriously like, like we bought two, two. <laughs> i'm keeping this one with me tonight <laughs> um so to understand how we lost joey is once again to understand the walk home from fort apache which is where a lot of shit starts to go wrong during our holidays <laughs> so yeah. fucking um it's like a two mile walk. Uh, it is. It's like yeah, it's like a two mile walk. But and it's your everyone's in a festive mood. There are a lot of Christmas lights on the walk. I and once you're made wasted. Smith walk back to our house past his in promises that we would have weed and alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> and when we got back to the house, mom kicked him out, and we all looked at him and said, "I think we're just gonna go to the <laughs> house. to walk another mile, to <laughs> yeah. a mile back, yeah. all by himself." And I never apologized. And we just talked to him about it this year like, before Thanksgiving came so, up again. So on one of these walks, um, Joey and this uh, Smith gentleman. Got it in their heads that they wanted to go. Uh, did you guys want to take a nap or did you? Yeah, no, we wanted. We thought it'd be funny to take a nap inside of a family's home and on their couch in front of the tree on Christmas and have them wake so up on Christmas morning to. We were, we were in their in their house. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the, I don't know if the door was so. Locked. No, you went you went to the door and tried to open it, and all of a sudden, an upstairs bedroom light <laughs> went on, like immediately. Like, and Jackie and I had just kept walking up the street to watch the whole thing from a distance, and like this light goes on. We're like, I guess Joey's gonna get arrested on Christmas. And all of a sudden, you and you and Smith just come sprinting down the block. <laughs> And then I think it was we had, ju- we had just said goodbye to Smith, like we just left him at his house when uh, a certain someone came skateboarding mm-hmm. we up. We actually Joey. walked up the street because usually we would take Harristown all the way down to Ackerman and make the left. But in this instance, we went up like Hamilton to Rock Road and made it right on Rock. And we were actually on like Hamilton. No, I thought it was in front of the high school that this happened. No, 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 no. This wasn't in front of the high I school. Thought it was, I thought it was by the high school. Nah, it was close to the high school. Jackie? Like, like down the street. I mean, he was on a skateboard. He probably just moved pretty quickly. <laughs> so like, but what did we see? I thought we saw him, like, right in front of the high school by Radburn Road. Not by Radburn, mm-hmm. no. No? We no, on, it was we really bad. We were on Hamilton, trust me. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, very vividly. I, you don't meet a, a famous gay, a mega, <laughs> a mega star in the, the gay uh, porn industry and forget. A little background on Connor Dane is we went to, uh, we grew up with this guy who, after we everyone graduated, it got exposed that he was doing gay porn. And... He, his his gay porn name and I'm I'm not shitting you. If you search fucking Connor Dane gay on Google, you are going to find oh, videos well, of a dude with of a skinny dude with a massive cock having gay <laughs> sex. Like this is this is a very real thing. You'll find the audio for the nine minutes <laughs> of commercial. <laughs> like. <laughs> fucking yeah. You'll also find the nine minutes of gay sex audio that I had to download to produce this podcast. <laughs> um, you'll. You'll find this guy, and uh, we grew up with him, and he made his gay porn name. He made it a combination of the names of his two best friends, who are Connor and Dane. So he made his name Connor Dane for gay porn. And Joey... Friendship. Yeah, that's, that's, that's bro-ship. Is that flattering for them, very, or very, creepy? Very, very. Uh, I don't know, because they got to know that they've had, uh, that they've had fucking sacks slapping against their hole, like... <laughs> Flattering. Um, <laughs> so Joey, I guess the, I'll I'll let you roll. With this. You seem to have a better grip on this one than I do. I grips. Puns to be made, but I can't. I'm not smart. Someday, um, someday. I don't even really remember. I just I know he just skateboarded up, and we all just kind of recognized each other. There was no one else, obviously, in the street. He said. I feel like he that. said something good too. Like he might have. I don't know. Black like guy. he said some shit like just out for a skate like like <laughs> just like but we stopped and chatted yeah we talked yeah. for a minute i have no idea about what but i remember us walking away like well we didn't realize that it was like, also within the same 
calendar year. Joey that realized he learned who he was. Yeah, I yeah. think Joey realized it as we were walking away. Yeah, because I first thought I was like, I don't know who just stopped to say hello, and then no, somebody I knew the whole was, time. yeah, but I think yeah. it was you. You were like, do you know who that was? Yeah. And you told us, and it was just this glorious. Like, I think that was Connor D. Yeah. <laughs> I think we had been talking. It had been like such like a big rumor around town for like the past year. And for that to be like the culminating event of our of, night of our Christmas was just Eve, so perfect. Yeah, it was a, <laughs> yeah, that was a poetic. Moment. Oh my God, uh, I I have to take um, a tremendous piss. Did we miss any of the tales of, of Christmas past, or are we ready to move on to um, the the penultimate, uh, the ultimate Montone family Christmas story? I mean, story? I'm sure yeah, there I'm are sure there are things, things we've probably a few we've but, missed, uh, but not. We've I mean, this is the one. Enough of them. I, this is the one, right? Yeah. Everyone gets the gist. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we've been up to. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, all right. We'll be back after uh, a word from another one of our sponsors. Dear Santa, all I want for Christmas this year is payback. And now you can go and get your payback with Outcast Revenge, the first-person shooter that gives you the chance to settle some scores. Lock, load, and step into the high school cafeteria. It's time to show those jocks who's boss. Put down the stocking stuffers and pick up a backpack stuffed with pipe bombs. No need for a Yule Log this year. You'll be basking in the warm glow of sweet revenge as shrapnel fills a crowded library during finals week. Or play in office mode and finally serve Peggy from accounting her just desserts. She definitely won't be snitching to HR about your inappropriate secret Santa gift after you present her with a belly full of slugs from your Benelli 12 gauge. And how about that little cock tease who spurned your advances at last year's Christmas party? Now's your chance to finally get her on her knees. As she begs for mercy, that is. Outcast Revenge is a high school nerd's wet dream, writes PC Gamer Magazine. I left the booby trap in the girls' locker room in the morning before school started. Those cheerleading sluts never saw it coming. Oh, how sweet it was, said online gaming reviewer Das Wiz. Successfully complete the disgruntled co-worker, high school loner, and mall shooter scenarios to unlock the Virginia Tech vignette. Then, end it all with a high-speed chase, suicide by cop, or take the easy way out and put a round through your temple before the authorities arrive. This Christmas, tell Santa there's only one thing on your list. Revenge. Outcast Revenge. Available on PlayStation 4 and Xbox. And we're back! <laughs> um, we're getting ready. This is the final segment. Um, fucking, what commercial just played? Oh, it was the, uh, the one where you shoot your classmates. Yeah, so I'll definitely go out and buy this. Very be relatable. It's going to be a very good video game. Anyway, the the ultimate Montone family Christmas story, which we've kind of referred to as... Uh, the It's either referred to as the Christmas strippers or a very Montone Christmas, is... I don't even... You can't even discuss. I think you just have to tell it. Like you just gotta, just gotta yeah, go just in. There were strippers in. at our house. On <laughs> <laughs> we. And that's it. <laughs> so right after I got, right after I got out of the Marine Corps, we, I was Joey and I were living at home because he had just graduated college, and we used to go every Sunday night to this bar in the town next to us for dollar beers in the NFL. And I think we got to the point where we were friendly enough with Derek, the bartender, to just be like, dude, can we like. Christmas is on a Sunday night. Like we come here after, like we're done with all our family shit. We'll we'll have ourselves a little Christmas party, yeah. and we'll you know lock the place down because no one's ever here. We'll we'll bring some some strippers in and we'll we'll celebrate uh, the, the fucking Yule Tide Carol or whatever. It, uh, we were literally the only ones that were in there on Sunday nights. Like, so it, it was, was a flawless. Usually plan. a fucking ghost town on Sundays. And there was a hidden second story within the bar, like a second floor that you could go to. Yeah, we were just gonna. We're going to private party it up there. Um, so I had to work. So I, I, I got off at 10 and I was like ready. So wh- how did you find these chicks? Where did they come from? And You master delegated down to me uh, the <laughs> task of finding the strippers. Mike loves to delegate. I do. Um, I like doing a lot of things that end in eight. <laughs> Masturb uh, is another so one. So a little prior direction, I scrounged the internet, called them from Uncle Tommy's house to, to meet us 
later that night at uh, at McMurphy's, and uh, after confirmation from a few friends, speak that up would, a little bit. They would be in the mix so that I wouldn't be on the hook for all this money. And uh, that was really it. The plan was set, and we got home from Tommy and Tina's, and we went out to me. walked into the uh, most packed. Probably the most crowded bar I've ever been into. <laughs> it was just fucking wall to wall. You couldn't even move in there. I no. like Derek didn't even have time to talk to us. Like it didn't even bother him that it was packed because like he wasn't. Even, he was just benefiting from us bringing the strippers. So As he, I said, he was he aware. No yeah, this had nothing to do with. Yeah, he had. He did not. He didn't pay a dime. Yeah, but um, he was aware of the plan. Right? So, yeah, but if it, if the plan failed, it didn't matter to yeah. him at all. You never. Decided. Yeah, so I I pulled up at like it had to be around eleven and. I see Joey and his friends out in the out in the parking lot talking to these chicks. So I I immediately knew something was amiss because they were standing standing around talking to women, which never happened. Very yeah. rare, very very rare. You yeah, usually it's a it's a pretty good <laughs> way that it's a a paid woman. <laughs> which we don't have time for today, but was another stripper story. There have been you know, there have been a few. You just know immediately a few incidences. We actually what tried to cancel on them because equals. they. They wouldn't, because um, we knew we couldn't do it at Derek's, and we had nowhere else to go. One of our friends worked for the town's public works department. It was gonna, he had a key to a shed, so we were going <laughs> to go, to go to a shed. But then he realized that there were cameras in the shed, and he didn't want to lose his job. So we called, Smith and I called them, and the two girls and tried to have a professional conversation and explain to them that we no longer <laughs> needed their services. And they said... We're on our way, and you're paying us. <laughs> oh, Jesus. We're on their way from Atlantic City. And instead of just being like, all right, you guys won't be able to find us, we... <laughs> you stayed at the bar. it out and stayed at the bar for some reason. We're going to find a solution. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> Well, because you would lose. So the solution yeah, that we... Women this, were going to talk to us. The solution that we exactly. came to. So we land on our house, because we figured mom and dad were asleep early. They go to sleep early. Like, yeah. oh, we'll, just, we'll just sneak them in. I forged ahead and tried to get them inside to no avail. I first went to the garage door, which was way too fucking creaky. Like, it creaked like a motherfucker. I stepped in, knocked over a bunch of kids. It was just noise. We described the scene of our I know. <laughs> but this is, it's once again. Like, yeah, it was, this thing has foiled so many of our holiday shenanigans. <laughs> yeah, it, was terrible. it was like a, a legitimate death trap. Like, that garage... Yeah, it's good that it's good that our dad didn't have any serious tools. Yeah. Otherwise, you could have been badly hurt. Yeah, like, no, there were no saws. He was the least. Yeah, from, we we yeah. benefited in that regard from yeah, him being the least hockey, handy yeah. man on the planet. A lot of hockey equipment. Yeah, the worst thing you were gonna get hit by was a <laughs> wiffle ball bat or an empty beer can. Yeah. Um. So we couldn't get him in through there, but I couldn't really bring him in through the front door because we'd be right on a wood floor, and we saw Bella. And she was very friendly and still kind of spry at that time. So she could still get up and like. She was uh, she was not a good guard dog, but she was definitely a great narc. Like, yeah. Oh, like, what? I feel like that was the same Christmas, Eve, Christmas yeah. Eve that mom told us that Bella was probably going to die. Yeah. Oh and then she hung God. on for like another she another did. three. It was like everyone was having a great time at Christmas Eve. And one time mom just looked at it and she was Bella's going to die. The girl was like. Oh, right. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Like, my dog's gonna die. So, eventually, I decide upon the uh, the sliding door in the back to bring them in. I'm like, all right, ladies, like, come on, like, we'll go downstairs, and we have the the layout of like our basement is that like a good chunk of it is like right below our parents' room, like attached to the garage, and we have like this little bathroom. So like, oh yeah, we have to go in there and change. Like, all right, cool. All the guys are downstairs. Like, we're we get into it like we I, we pop some cool Christmas lights on. We got some got some tunes going. We're drinking beers. Like yeah, I got some strippers. This is gonna be fun. Like a Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad. Um, and they must have. There's a. I think that the yeah, vent really that like goes the vent that goes from the va- that bathroom to where mom and dad's room one was was probably what did us in because mom knew strippers were in play for the evening yeah. and. When we came home, probably without them, there was probably some confusion, and then... Well, because you guys were pretty suspicious throughout the day. Like, Joey was going outside, like, taking phone calls. That's at Tommy and Tina. a businessman. Like, yeah, there was, like, calls. Joey wasn't doing anything You weren't doing any business. I was yeah. the head of, like, I was, I was the head of outside You were, like, un- you were yeah. delivering you were, <laughs> you were the only delivery guy who wasn't on a substance that prevented him from delivering pizza. <laughs> and that's not even necessarily true. It's just when you led them to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we ordered Stop pizza on Christmas 
Christmas Eve from the place Joey was working. And the delivery guy who showed up that day told me a story about their Christmas party and how they found Joey passed out in the bathroom. <laughs> We've been working there for three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> right before I got my promotion. But um, I digress. No. Anyway, so no, the, the whole thing was you guys were being suspicious. Joey was taking phone calls. Joey didn't need to take phone calls. So we knew something was going on. Uh, you probably said the word stripper about 50 times <laughs> for Christmas dinner. So. Like um, I said, I was delegated by Mike with little direction. Hey, I, I, I give my desired end state and you go out and fucking... You delegated <laughs> to an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Your first name. Uh, so there's probably about six of us down there and the, the show is about to begin. The, the girls come down and like they're they're wearing like the little lingerie getups and honestly fully clothed you would think they were just a couple of college chicks like they were just like regular fucking white girls strippers are people too kind of yeah <laughs> so they're like oh we're gonna play a game like we're, uh you know you're gonna give us you're gonna give us money but you're gonna you're not gonna use your hands and we're gonna pick it up but we won't use our hands so so me and uh, Bogo are both laying down with uh, cash on our faces <laughs> and all of a sudden the fucking the upstairs door. Uh-huh. There's some in between. Is you. there what you want to? Uh... Where? So I was not involved. All day. I want to make that. I was not here during this. <laughs> um, so I went over to our to our neighbors for a couple of drinks after because I knew what was going on and I knew I didn't want to be home and I was also particularly excited because this was something that I felt there's no way I can get. Rid of. <laughs> like typically we were like the three of us got in trouble. Like one person got in trouble and the three of us were somehow like they're yeah we were all connected we were yeah we were usually all everyone is was accused as our father likes to say as an accessory yeah he's like a fucking like an overzealous uh, our parents were like overzealous prosecutors (laughs) they would just throw as many charges at you as possible (laughs) until you copped to one just to get it all to end and then they would hammer you for whatever one they got you on they they used to refer to us as allies yeah Yeah. (laughs) um so anyway so i was like very excited because i knew what was going on i thought it was hilarious but also knew i couldn't get in trouble so i came home that night and i i heard just like them in the basement, my brothers, some of, some of our friends from high school. A couple so I, of babes. No, nah, I think they're the, the paid ladies at this point. Babes. So, paid ladies. So, I was like, well, I'll just go down and have a drink with all of them. And I got down the stairs, and we had like, the, once you got down, there was that little bar, and then to the right was the pool table. And Joey came over and sort of blocked me from coming all the way down and was like, you don't want to come down. <laughs> and I said, well, what's going on? And he goes, there's a stripper under the pool table. <laughs> So I was just like, oh, that's right. Mom had tried to come down once already. No, we, this was our plan because we thought mom was Jackie. Oh, what was that? So we that was our, our plan. Because yeah. we did after, hide one behind the well, pool yeah, table like eventually. Minute after Jackie opened the door and went back upstairs, yeah. the door reopened. Well, then I said to Joey, I was like, you know mom's like right up. Because she used to do this thing when she knew we were up to something where she would do dishes at like 3 o'clock in the morning. Like if you were doing up to something at 3 o'clock in the morning, she would wake up and just be like, cleaning the kitchen and doing dishes because she wanted to catch you and she thought she was being discreet I guess by like yeah, like by clanging household by items. clanging plates around and opening and running a dishwasher yeah, we she like, thought yeah. she was being discreet we like I know you're not doing the dishes right, like, right now so I told her I was like you know she's awake whatever and, but you know they kept moving forward and I went to bed again very happy because I was like they're gonna get caught like there was zero question in my mind like I knew you guys were not gonna get away with this and I was really excited about it. Like, I didn't want you guys to get in trouble, but, like, it's hilarious. So I went to bed, and then I would say about three minutes later, Joey came running up the stairs yelling, Jack, she found the strippers! <laughs> <laughs> so after Jackie goes up, what happened was our mother, all right, our mother comes down, and we had, again, everything, this is an old house, it was very creaky. The door creaks open, we're like, strippers behind the pool table, now. <laughs> The strippers hide behind the pool table, and our mother comes down the stairs, like half asleep, half drunk, in her pajamas. The hell's going on down here? Like she just sees six of like six guys in a room with ambient lighting, listening to dance music and drinking together. <laughs> with a like, blanket on the ground. She, yeah, she she knows something. She knows there is fuckery afoot. You were laying on the blanket. No, that that was that was later. If Dad had walked down there, he would just. He like, just could, it like, would have confirmed for him that Joey was up to some gay, gay shit. Like, <laughs> gay. Yeah, you're just like. Gay. <laughs> we're like, whoa, mom, we're just uh, hanging around having a, a 
holiday drink with the guys. They'll be out of here soon. Don't you worry. <laughs> And the strippers are, are behind the pool table with, I think, like, Connor and Bogo were, like, ducked down underneath <laughs> it with them. And Mom does a no-shit lap through the basement. She goes around every fucking corner of that basement other than behind the pool table. She goes into the laundry room. She goes into where Dad's, like, computer desk and the couch and the TV were. She was everywhere except on the side of the pool table where the strippers were ducked down. The like it was strippers like strippers were very good at hiding. They were fantastic yeah, like, until they weren't. Yeah. <laughs> which we'll get to in a moment. Um, but they were like you know like in like those like 1990s like it, kids co- like shows where like they'd hide behind the plant like Scooby Doo like, yeah like, like they like fuck like, the- like, <laughs> hide behind the fucking like it's a secret hiding spot behind the plant and then like the, like, <laughs> like like walk Mom, steps like, opens a behind, drawer yeah. and they pop out the drawer yeah the below drawer and below and they <laughs> sneak into another one yeah like it was like a fucking Tom and Jerry cartoon <laughs> she goes back up and she's doing the thing where she pretends to be awake and hangs out in the living room on her iPad and we're just like fuck like we're we're on the clock with these chicks. We have an hour. We have an hour to get our entertainment in and to get them out of the house without getting caught. I go up. I do like the whole fake going to sleep thing, and then like come down to get a glass of water. Go, you know, all sorts. Just trying to throw her off the scent. I go back into the basement. I'm like, look, I think we just gotta un- uncork and and do this thing. So we're like, all right, ladies, let's let's start the show. That's when they were like, okay, we're you're gonna give us some cash, but. You're not going to hand it to us, and we're not going to use our hands to take it. So me and Bogo, Bogo was, like, lying on the couch, and I was lying on, like, a blanket on the floor. And we both had money over our faces, and these chicks are squatting over our faces. And all of a sudden, the fucking, the door at the top of the steps flies open. I'm just like, strippers, behind the couch, now. So they're, like, cramped down behind the arm of this couch. And our mother and come, that blue chair, the blue swivel chair. Yeah, the fucking, oh, the old that school corner. swivel chair from Nani's house. Mom comes into the basement and she does a full lap around the pool table this time into the laundry room. I'm like, oh, she's going to go back up. I'm going to see him behind the couch. It's going to be fucking amazing. I'm fucking lying on the ground, like posed, leaning up against, like hand, hand to cheek, leaning against the floor very innocently. And my mother's like, why are you laying on the ground? Fuck, why wouldn't I? Because this is a fucking comfy blanket here. Mom, why? Why would I not lay on the ground? On like, cement floor. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I not lay on the ground? This dollar bill on my mouth. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I might have also had a twenty dollar bill on my face. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, she takes her focus off of me, and I hear whoever's arm that is behind the couch get out here right now. And it was at that moment... I, Jackie, were you in the basement for this? I was not. I was notified by Joey running up the stairs yelling, <laughs> Jack, she fell. <laughs> it was at that moment... I wasn't down there while you were... While you and strippers were I didn't changing know, I didn't, money I didn't, via I didn't, ass <laughs> to mouth. I didn't know. in pen. I didn't... I, I thought you were there for that. Point. I didn't know if you would walk down with mom to see oh, it all happen. No. Can you guess? <laughs> um... Two ass-naked strippers strut into the middle of our living room, or our, like, basement hangout area, in front of our mother. Her fucking jaw went through the floor. I think her first, the first thing that came out of her mouth was, how old are you? <laughs> and they, they were like, they were reasonable. She's like, they're like, we have ID, we can show you, we're both 21. Um, I imagine that was enough for mom, like, she's like, like if you're yeah, thinking, oh, you know, borderline was. Yeah, it was. Actually, yeah. Uh, she was just, the, and then once she said, like, like, what are you doing hanging out with these losers? <laughs> yeah, or something she, along she, those lines. She, like, teamed up with the strippers. <laughs> she was like, what are you doing? Oh, that, all right. She's like, Joe, did you pay, did you pay that, like, did you pay them? And Joe's like, no, we didn't, we didn't pay them. And the chi- and as she's saying that, like, the, one of the chicks was like, ma'am, we promise we weren't going to suck your son's dicks or yeah. anything like that. And I said, well, first of all, we did pay them. And since we did, they should. <laughs> Fucking. That's when mom had just had enough. She, I think she offered the, she offered she like offered the wine. wine. She, she felt bad. Like, she legitimately watched. She was like, bad for these girls like she wanted she thought in that night she was gonna instill some like values in them yeah like they weren't on they were like like this is great like i didn't have to do half of the work yeah they did zero work they paid they're just like i'm gonna hang out in someone's parents basement with a bunch of losers this was weird but i get my money and i didn't have to do this is yeah this this is so much easier than finance guy doing coke off my tits (laughs) and then offering me 20 bucks for a blowjob like that was fucking that was the easiest work night like we gave them they're telling 
telling this Christmas story right yeah, now, probably. Sure. That was hands down, I think, one. Of the, I went on lot, like I went on Facebook right after that, and I just put up a status. I was like, no joke. It's 2 a.m. the day after Christmas. My mother just kicked two strippers out of out of our house. Details to come. This is actually <laughs> marked the five year anniversary. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> Joey's Happy birthday. anniversary, Happy Joey. Happy anniversary, Mike. It's a big oh, this year is fair. For Joey. Should we do it again? Yeah. yeah. Should we do it? Should we have them come off? to Tommy's <laughs> or to, to, to Tommy's house just during the meal? Oh, I was gonna say fair lawn in like that office. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mom walks. <laughs> I'll lock in. You'll be back. I'll do the food chop. <laughs> they got the goddamn door locked again. <laughs> That is, uh, does anyone have anything they want to close with? Because I well, want to get to the SantaCon pre I just feel yeah. like you're missing dad's yeah. reaction yeah. to all of this. Oh, yeah. Which, again, is just very descriptive. Dad's view on us. That of a man who had been inconvenienced. Yeah, like he literally... By, w- by forgetting to pull out. <laughs> so, dad, when he... Because we were all in the kitchen at this point, and I believe Smith and some of your other friends were like... Begging mom and dad not to call their parents, which was <laughs> they were a, they were all like twenty three years old. Yeah, it was like you're out of college, you're gonna be moving out soon, and they were just like, you're not gonna call my mom and dad, are you? And just like a bunch of losers. And then dad came downstairs. He didn't know what was going on. He just came down to get a glass of water, and he just looked around. He's like, what's happening? And mom was just like, they had strippers in the basement, and dad just was like. Ugh. All right. I'm gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a great, in any other house, this again would have been like the the breakdown of the family. No one would have spoken again after this. But with the Montones, it was just it was business as usual. Yeah. Like yeah, they were pissed like, off. Two days. They were pissed off for a record two days. <laughs> um, um, these waffles are delicious, ladies. Fantastic job. A little round of applause yeah, for the, the waffles. Waffles are great. Cookies, everything. Well done. A very weak round of applause. Well, we got microphones. Come on. All right. That's good. That was good. That'll sound very, good on the mic. Very congratulatory. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, that's it. Again, Facebook, www.facebook.com slash the savage crew. Look for the Patrick Bas- Bateman picture and the uh, the shark jumping out of the water is the wallpaper. On Twitter, at Mike Montone. And we have YouTube, Instagram, all, all that good shit. I'm saying this right now. I'm hoping, hoping to record a musical medley by our uncle Tommy Montone to wrap this thing up. Keep listening. It's either going to come or it's not. All depends what happens when we see him uh, next weekend. You may be listening to Dead Air or you may be listening to uh, some fantastically fun Christmas parody songs. All right, later, later, bitches. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Bye bye, guys. Bye bye. Merry Bye-bye. Christmas. Bye guys. Happy anniversary to Joe. Thank you. And Thanks. me. And Mike. Thanks. Well, Joey's Thanks. got the two. That's it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, happy double anniversary and happy and happy anniversary. And, happy anniversary. Right. and uh, www.college247.com. Savage. <laughs> <laughs> College Dudes 247, actually, where you can find uh, Connor Dane videos. Yeah. So you may as well check it out anyway. All right. Uh, here is maybe Uncle Tommy or maybe not. Bye. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have gotten it. We got Tommy Montone. He's ready to do some crooning for us. They're listening to Wham! Last Christmas out in the living room, but Tommy's going to drop a little holiday medley on us right now. Tommy, say hello to the people. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas and a beautiful New Year's 2017. Looking forward to it, getting back on that beach. Ready to sing some songs? I'm ready to sing. Let it rip. Dashing to the bowl in the middle of the night Ran out of toilet paper, started screaming for my wife Wasn't the calamad swimming in the grease The baked clams or the bacala we had on Christmas Eve Oh, stomach pains, who's to blame when your hunger turns to lust? Just like Santa, ho, 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 we eat until we bust Oh, stomach pains, who's to blame for the terrible way we feel when you sit on the bowl and you start to explode have a nice dish of scongeal the families arrive the house is all aglow tonight there'll be no pot roast there'll be no sloppy joe but a glass or two of wine some mussels and linguine some panettone a fat cigar and a mug of irish cream oh stomach pains who's to blame when you're throwing up your guts santa's laughing ho 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 
have more figs and nuts. Oh, stomach pains, who's to blame for the terrible way you feel? When you sit on the bowl and you start to explode, have a nice dish of scongeal. Come in, Rudolph, you'll get the runs. Oh! A three, two, one, Beach Boys! Well, away down south where the air gets hot, there's about a million people that old Santa forgot. He started sweating bullets, said, the hell with you all. Put some crack in his pipe and started scratching his balls. He's a little fat prick, little fat prick. He's a little fat prick, little fat prick. He's just a little fat prick who zips around in his sleigh. With an elf on his knee, rumor has it he's gay. He had to take a leaf, he kissed the elf goodbye. You could hear that midget screaming as he fell through the sky. Yara! A little fat prick, little fat prick. You're a little fat prick, little fat prick. And Santa's gassy. <laughs> and Rudolph's laughing. He's such a big homo. They get back to the North Pole. Mrs. Claus is pissed. He leaves her there to clean up all the reindeer shit. She catches him in bed now and then with the Grinch. With the big Laponza hiding what's no more than an inch. Just a little fat prick, little fat prick. Just a little fat prick, little fat prick. Oh, oh, oh. Merry Christmas. Tonight I'll be putting in. It up Rudolph's ass. Ooh, Merry Christmas. Tonight I'll be putting it up Rudolph's ass. Ooh, ooh, oh! <laughs> I think we got, let me just double check. My voice lost it. That's I cool, man. Team, man. I was Dude, this is how podcasting goes. Yeah, we should be in good shape there.